uh, to play it painted live. Here we go with another live one. Now, there's always something I have to set up every time now. Uh, and instead, before it used to just be the uh, uh, it used to just be the chat on my computer. Now we got to do the chat on XSplit. So this is an entire like authentication process that we go through. Where I have to enter in my email address, then. I have to enter in my password. It asks me all these things. It has, to, and it asks you every time you set this up. And then every time you set it up, uh, then it's gonna allow you to select your event. And then you're gonna change your opacity. And then you're gonna change, Nah, your name's good and just change the messages to black, I suppose, and we'll be happy, right? We're gonna, we're just gonna be happy doing that. Hey, what's up? Got him 777. I know that does sound complicated. Thank you for tuning in. Let's share my stream. You gotta do all this crap just to like, okay, paintings on the side now, right? And then, then you gotta do that and then you gotta add uh, a twitch link and a, a youtube link and then you just share it right so now there okay cool what's up man how's it going um yeah just gonna be doing some painting i need to finish this uh, zombicide thing because i have so much stuff to get moving on uh so we're gonna we're going to get the other four minis kind of caught up, or hopefully caught up. So we're going to stick them on these deals, these thingy deals. So let's stick one there, and one there. This one, ugh. Sometimes the tack just, you got to like peel bits of it off. It just ends up getting too... Ugh, too beat up with paint so you just kind of freshen it up like that oh you know <laughs> I don't know if did you catch the uh, the zombicide game we played last night that was pretty hilarious at least I thought so did you guys ever end up? Yeah, we did. We last night we uh, we played a game of Zombicide Season One. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, it's uh, I I thought it was fairly entertaining. It was a short game of Zombicide because we I was intentionally trying to get a short uh, scenario, and I think I found one. Uh, so it was a short game, and then we uh, raffled off some prizes afterwards for extra life. So. Uh, so just shameless plug here, um, you know, if, even if you, I would encourage you to, to donate to my Extra Life campaign if you haven't done so already, but uh, even if you don't, you know, I understand times are tough right now. There's like a natural disaster happening in every quadrant of the country as we speak, so I totally get it if uh, now is not a good time to donate. But anyway, um, even if you don't donate, even if you can't donate, uh, the deal is, uh, if you are part of a stream where I am giving stuff away and you leave a comment live on that stream, then you are eligible for a prize on that stream. So that's cool. Because a couple of people so far, two or three of the viewers that hadn't donated, at least at the time um, I did the uh, the promotion, they won prizes uh, you know, prior to donating. So I thought that was cool. Um, oh gosh, I have to like, I have to get creative here, like to move wires. Uh, how can I get in on the next game? Um, I guess the best way to do it would be, we'd have to have, uh, I would say shoot a message, uh, on my Facebook page, uh, on the plate painted Facebook page. So that way I know, like that way we have a chat open. The easiest way to do it, if you have a chat open on Facebook, then I can copy paste the link to the Hangout 
um, prior to the game and actually give you a heads up hey we're gonna play a game at this time um, then you have a link to the uh, to the hangout uh, and then you can get in on the game we are looking for more players so it's perfect um, you know the only uh, criteria I have for hopping on is just don't be like the dead fish like a cold fish <laughs> like talk <laughs> that's it like find a balance where you're talking and you're entertaining or you're not and whilst not like trying to take over the whole stream by yourself <laughs> right that sounds fair right i think that sounds fair i don't know um but yeah so it was actually really fun uh like I said, um, Andrew and uh, Dizzy jumped in. Neither one of them had played Zombicide before. Uh, and we were playing season one, like, I think pre errata rules. I mean, I, I basically, it's just the, the very first set that came out. I have that set painted, and I didn't buy any. I never bought more Zombicide. Because I was like, okay, that's about as much of the game as I like. Right? I don't need special dogs. I don't need like 20 different types of walkers or whatever. <laughs> oh, you sent a message to my personal Facebook. That's fine. Did you? Oh, that's not the reason why that's not a good idea. And this isn't, I promise you, it's not my fault. Um, those messages end up in some weird freaking limbo. I don't know if you knew this about Facebook. But they end up in some weird limbo where they're like not approved messages or whatever because we're not Facebook friends or something. And like I might never see them. Um, <laughs> they, I, I, I never I, uh, I might never see them like it just uh, two or three months ago. I found the area that was like, oh, unapproved, you know, PMs or whatever. And I opened it up and they were like. 30 messages in there and the, the weird thing is like three or four of them were like for like lawsuits like hey Octave we are going after this game company and we heard you had a bad time with this at this convention or something and I'm like well uh word yeah I didn't want to so so that was interesting um so yeah don't I mean you know, whatever. If we we can get in contact that way, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying it's dicey. Like if if we're not on the thing, then like you know, I know there was a sentence in there somewhere. Oh, we are. Holy shit. Well then, I don't. I, I mean, okay. Well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh wait a minute. You sent me a. You told me what character you wanted to play in SDE, right? Okay. Well, in that case, then we're good. Then then don't worry about sending it to the... Uh, it's just... Uh, I didn't... We did Zombicide. We haven't gone back to do SDE, uh, which we will eventually. Um, I, I'm actually... I have a... I have a slight conundrum with... Um, <clears throat> uh, with um streaming like uh hangout type games on uh <laughs> oh i don't know <laughs> okay thanks dude yeah um yeah so i i do want to do uh sde again and in fact i want to do uh more like hangout style games but i have a technical conundrum that i'm trying to solve and that is when we do a Facebook style, uh, I'm sorry, a, um, a Hangout style game, uh, it's easy enough to stream that Hangout on YouTube. Not an issue. Like we can have whatever ten players on, theoretically, and stream the Hangout to uh, to YouTube and just use my screen as like the always project screen so that everybody can see the game board and whatnot, right? And respond to it, uh, respond to it live. Um, no, that wasn't me either. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't say popular, but anyway, um, 
But yeah, so we can stream on YouTube. The problem is like right now, for example, I'm streaming on YouTube and Twitch at the same time because I am trying to grow uh, a Twitch presence um, because I think long term Twitch is a, a really good format for, you know, me. I like to do a lot of um, just live streaming. I do a lot more live streaming than, you know, edited like set videos. I just like flip the camera on and then we just kind of do what we do, right? Um, not just the painting, but I do gaming too. And so it seems to me like Twitch kind of has the, kind of has a better, I guess a better footprint for doing that type of content. Um, the only problem I have with Twitch is, you know, if you don't have, if you're not a Twitch affiliate, then it doesn't keep your videos. So if you're not watching at the time I'm streaming, you're effed, right? You're just like, you don't get to watch. So what, I, you know, what I'm trying to do is get at least to the point where I'm a Twitch affiliate so that my videos stay up for a couple of weeks on Twitch uh, so that people can watch them and enjoy them. Uh, and, you know, we'll see where that goes. Because I, I think my growth here on YouTube is basically at an end it is it's basically uh, you know i don't have this isn't this isn't a monetized channel um and there are i have my own separate reasons for doing that i just don't think it's worth it like i don't think it's worth for my you know 20 odd people that actually watch this thing to uh uh to have them have to click past ads or anything like that uh so i don't monetize the channel also i don't the other reason why i don't monetize the channel on the YouTube side is because I don't, I don't want, I, I see too much um, of other channels I watch getting censored or demonetized and somehow punished for saying, you know, for saying things that maybe aren't the most main, mainstream things, you know, that aren't the most popular opinions. Actually, they might even be popular opinions. They're just not socially acceptable. So, now, let's see. I just asked if you guys decided to run a zombie side game or not yet, because I know it was either that or the Bruce Lee game. Yeah, it. Uh, we didn't really know until like Friday night, right before I set up, and I was figuring out like who would actually be around for the game. I had um, uh, Dizzy and and Andrew were both in, and then Nelson was supposed to to join as well. He ended up not joining. And uh, so based on the idea that we would have uh, four players playing, I was like, okay, we'll do a four player zombicide game. That'll be good. So that's where I, that's why I kind of ended up on that decision. I still want to do, go back and do, oh my gosh, cleaning your airbrush with gloves on is super hard because you're trying to screw the little thing on. Um, I still want to go back and do the Bruce Lee game uh, with my modified rules. Uh, but at this point, oh my gosh, I can't even get this stupid thing on. Hold on. <laughs> um, yeah, I still want to do that. <clears throat> it just didn't seem right for, for the other night. Like, basically I'd have to walk everybody through the rules and, you know, it, it's their, it, their homebrew rules, so... There's some like spot judgments and stuff we'd have to make and, you know, we'll have to do it though, because I do think there is a way to make that game at least more entertaining than it currently is. I just don't think that the current mechanics for that game are entertaining enough to be called a game. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, uh, yeah, it's just not. I don't know. I don't. Maybe some people find it fun because actually, uh, some people have told me, "Oh yeah, I think the Bruce Lee game is actually really fun." And I was like, "Word, it's not." Anyway, um, kind of fun, I guess. It's just the, you know, if you're playing a kung fu game, the the actual fighting mechanics should be really entertaining, like wire stunts and and like one shot knock KOs and uh, stuns and like group attacks and all this other kind of stuff, right? The game, and the, the game sort tries to tackle some of that stuff, but it just doesn't do so. And 
in interesting manners. You basically play rock, paper, scissors, and then roll dice and count things. And it, it's just not, okay, so you count things and then your move happens. Uh, my idea is actually to use the system that's uh, from uh, Ninja All-Stars, which gives you, oh, hey, what's up, Dave? Um, which gives you a variety of moves and you have a when you know when you roll the dice yeah you roll dice and you cancel stuff out but then you have all of this um you have these really interesting decisions that you make regarding um you know how uh how you are going to handle a combat based on what types of moves have been countered so that's the idea with the mod is we're going to use uh ninja all-stars style combat and ninja all-stars dice and we're also, oh my gosh, I still have a, I guess I still have a clog. How do I still have a clog in this? I thought I cleared that out pretty well. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got a clog. Hold on. It's bad. Um, but yeah, that's the idea, is... Let's use that. And then the other thing is we can also move it into a full co-op game, uh, which is okay. You know, it, it would make it easier when there are fewer people playing it um, by just by kind of a, adopting a couple of Zombicide slash SDE arcade mode rules. The one thing that would be cool about that going like full co-op mode is I think Com that combined with the Ninja All-Stars combat mechanic, you can actually end up, oh gosh, you can actually end up fighting a lot more, um, a lot more thugs. Oh man. It really just doesn't want to stick on there, does he? Come on, man. Urgh. I know my uh, sticky tack is starting to get beat up. Hmm, doesn't sound like any Zombicide game I've played. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I, I'm not sure what you're referring to specifically, Russell, but uh, we're talking about actually modifying the Bruce Lee uh, board game. Such that, you know, you can... Because you think about these Kung Fu heroes, right? Why would they take, like, two, three, four, five turns fighting individual thugs? Like, they would be one-shotting a bunch of the thugs. If you watch their movies, right? Um, and Dave says, did you have fun playing Zombicide last night? We did. I, I hope that uh, came through, actually, because of the... <laughs> there was actually uh, a lot of laughing and a lot of unintelligible speech. So to me, that's a success, right? If you can't... If you're laughing to the point where you can't really tell what people are saying then it's pretty good. But yeah, that was a fun one. We could break out some more Zombicide again at some point. Uh, I'm following on Twitch now. I need to get the Twitch more often. Yeah. Um, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, I just need to get to 50. Uh, 50 followers on Twitch, and then we're, then we should be good. Um, <clears throat> I've been watching some Twitch lately. <laughs> Fried rice with zombie meat. <laughs> yeah, um, I've been watching some Twitch lately, just trying to get an understanding of like what goes on on the painting and hobby side here. It's a little weird. I feel a little old watching Twitch. Like I feel like I'm out of the loop on a bunch of the you know, Twitch-specific stuff. I was commenting that uh, some of these shows and stuff I see on Twitch are like, they're almost like the bad VH1 shows of the early 2000s. You know, all those list shows. The top 100 hairdos and the rock stars. And, you know, top 100 scariest commercials. Like, they... They had those, if you remember those terrible, I just hated those shows. Um, you know, what your 
and, and so they would have these just awful cringy lists and then they would wheel out these uh like wannabe entertainers you know like they couldn't get actual stars to talk about you know why shoop is the number 93 song and not the num number 94 song and these guys come on and they tell you about oh well i remember when shoop was a big deal in my junior high and like you really don't care you really you're not invested in like even I, actually i mean in general i don't really care too much about celebrities lifestyles and stuff but even less so like people that are trying to be celebrities like they're trying and failing at being celebrities um and so you have to watch some of that crap you know on, on vh1 in the in the early 2000s you might you might have caught it at your dentist office or you know the doctor's office or something like that these were not good shows is what i'm saying and so you see that on Twitch and you're like, oh, that's where all those crap shows went. They went to Twitch and, you know, they reskinned them as a D&D &D game or they reskinned them as nerd trivia or something like that. See, I'm already talking shit about the format. Now I just got finished saying, oh, well, I think Twitch might be better for what I do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I was like, I was remarking. To someone the other day, I'm like, man, the more I watch Twitch, the older I feel. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. It's not that, not that relevant or invested or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of fried rice talk uh, last night. Looks like, um, I, I think that's the video idea. I'm going to make a how to make fried rice video. Which is pretty funny. I actually, um, on uh, on my YouTube channel, if you look hard enough, I teach you how I make my um, pancit. Pancit is a Filipino uh, noodle dish. And so I made a video of, of how to make pancit on my channel and posted that. And again, it was for Thanksgiving, so I always have a... Uh, I'm all, that's like... Sadly, one of the only times a year that I am cooking in the actual kitchen. You know, the, the few the few times I I do cook, it's usually out on the grill. So I'll do a, I'll, you know, I either go grill or microwave. Those are the only two modes of cooking that I really understand. Where did my, uh, you know, I just bought a brand new bottle of gray primer. Uh, on a four-player Zombicide game, please and thank you. Yeah, we can do, uh, we can do that, but, but I am, yeah, we, what we do need to do is, like, I want to figure out how do they, because they do it on Twitch, like, how do those guys stream, multi-stream events where they have, you know, multiple people, uh, tuning into the live state of the board game while... Um, it's getting too cold in Montana, breaking in my airbrush here. Um, they do it on Twitch. I just don't know what they're using, and I don't know how their what their setup is. Like, how do they get a what is essentially a multi hangout call or a or a you know a multi person Skype call, and then how do they stream that? You know, uh, I'm using XSplit, and XSplit saying. You can stream a, a, a Skype call, but you can only stream a one-on-one -on -one Skype Skype call. You can't stream a like a multiple, a multi-user Skype call. That is super powdery, and I don't think I want to use that unless I'm like way out. Is Zombicide fun? Never played. Have a hard time getting gaming group together here in the sticks. It's 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 entertaining. It's a it's a fun kind of narrative game. It's not a deep, you know, like your your hardcore board gamers will often turn their nose up at Zombicide because it's oh yet another boring zombie game, uh, you know, and it's it, it plays very much like a video game. It's not, you know, it's just not deep, it's not deep level 
thinking or tactics involved. There's some. But you know, it's a it would be considered for a like board game pedigree, it would be considered a fairly average game, but it's an entertaining game none, nonetheless. You have you have really interesting character references and that kind of stuff. Um so I find it entertaining. I, I, for me, uh, Zombicide is, I lean more towards the, oh, sorry, reading Goddess comment or Dave's comment. Zombicide is a blast to play. And then Gotham says, I lean more towards Black Plague, but it is hella fun to play. It gets challenging the further you get. For me, I, I kept to Zombicide season one and I, I specifically used it as an icebreaker. You know, Zombicide Season 1, with um, the right scenario, is a great way to get casuals into board gaming or even miniature gaming in, in a way that is palatable to them. So that should tell you something about the game. It is entertaining, but it's, you know, it's beer and pretzel entertaining. Um, and uh, it, it's great for... My, the best success i found is you get six people together that have never played, really have played a board game outside of like Monopoly. You get that group together and they really start getting into Zombicide. And uh, by the end of the game, everybody knows the rules. Everybody's invested. Um, and uh, it, it tends to be a really good time. I'm just going to... That gray's not helping. So I'm going to use... I just, I'm going to burn up the last of the current gray that I have. The rules are fixed in Black Plague. Yeah, I'm sure they work through all the, the numerous, you know, quirks that the Season 1 had. I mean, I'm just dealing with Season 1 straight out of the package. And I bought that game, like, pretty much right when it launched in retail. Did not back the Kickstarter for it. Um... And then a friend of mine gave me those limited edition figs that I have. So, but yeah, it's a fun game. Um, and we, we definitely plan on playing it again on the channel. Whoa. My airbrush is not... This one just does not want to work tonight. Wants the night off, I suppose. Will not get the night off. Just having the worst time getting product through it. Might have to give this uh, more of a deep clean. Not sure how you mean fix, but I have a ton of the hero expansions for Black Plague, so my group always mixes up strategies. Like locally, you almost never see people playing Zombicide unless it's at a convention and they're teaching people how to play Zombicide. And very, very few people have fully painted sets of Zombicide. Shooting into combat, you don't kill heroes first. Though that's good. Honestly, I kind of like that rule in Zombicide because it, you know, it made it, even though it wasn't, doesn't seem to make sense logistically, I like that it was like an additional challenge. Like you had to figure out, that way you had, you wanted to have characters that were, you know, that had a, um, good melee, and then you also wanted to have other characters that had good range options. I have two boxes of monster bosses. Why is that? It's weird. Yeah, I definitely like that rule a lot more than standard modern zombicide for shooting into the occupied zone. It just made it, it made the 
planning and coordination and the character uh, your character development trajectory a little more interesting you have to think about okay well what happens when we get into a situation where you know we have a whole pack of runners show up on us the closest thing to gaming people do here is either D&D or magic yep D and D are magic basically everywhere, and then you know if you start talking miniature games, then it's 40k, X Wing, maybe Privateer Press, and then everything else after that is kind of a gamble. You know you're looking at either Infinity Malifaux or Guild Ball, probably being more common as the next tier down, and then you got everything else below that. Batman, Relic Knights, Inner Majesty's Name, Frostgrave, all of those kind of fall below that. True, he don't care about walls. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where my clog is. I definitely have a clog. By the time these are all primed and blocked, it's not even going to matter, though. Let's try to, I bet it's actually behind the feral again. Um, let's see, Higzilla says, you are fixing to hear a lot about Star Wars uh, Legion. Hey, what's up, uh, Higzilla? Thanks for joining the uh, Twitch feed. Um, Fixing to hear a lot about Star Wars Legion. I mean, I know I'm going to hear a lot about Star Wars Legion. Uh, I had some people locally kind of fanboying out on it. Uh, I I try to stay away from the larger scale uh, uh, miniatures games. I just, you know, 40k I think kind of killed that desire to play in those the bigger um the the high model count games nada uh let's see i don't have that one seen it or the werewolf either green horde is going to be fun but can't wait till it comes in frostgrave looks hella cool with all the customizable options with your figs well, wow. yeah, there's a, we went through a phase of a, where we were playing a lot of Frostgrave, uh, and Frostgrave is a super fun game. You know, it's definitely more of a narrative or campaign style game, um, and we really liked it. I think our only, the only issue we had with it is we, we played way too much multiplayer, Frostgrave and multiplayer Frostgrave takes a while. That's a long, like, that's my, you know, everyone wants to play multiplayer miniature games, and I, I'll do it once in a while, but it, I don't like that it eats up the entire evening. You know what I mean? And if you're playing and you, you want to get some idea of, okay, how well, how good is this particular configuration or, you know, how am I playing any better or worse? It's very hard to, to do that in multiplayer because it's like, okay, well, they had both other players ganged up on me. My stuff was dead, you know, in the first couple of turns, I never really had a chance to find out what it does. You know what I mean, so that's kind of my, my, uh, misgivings about multiplayer is yeah it's cool it sounds good on paper um you know and it's cool to get you know, if you have three people like three two of your friends showed up and and you guys want to play all want to play the same miniatures game then multiplayer kind of makes sense but it's you know long long term i i would prefer you know to have try to get four players and just get two two one-on-one -on -one games but that's just me. I'd rather get two one-on-one -on -one games because 
if you had two one-on-one -on -one games going simultaneously, well, they would. The odds are that they're actually going to finish uh, with uh, possibly enough time for you to um, to play a second game. So you're not just you know everyone's playing a three-player game of Frostgrave for the entire evening. You know you can also say, okay, we played a two-player game of Frostgrave, and then after that we broke out a different game and played that too. Star Wars Legion, uh, I really know nothing about other than, you know, it's going to be a lot of stormtroopers and a lot of rebels and, you know, there may be some other factions and there are ad ats and uh, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but I, you know, unless the game mechanically can figure out how to, how to play at that scale, in a manner that I find entertaining, um, I don't know. I, I I don't know. The I will say that the, the if we're talking larger scale skirmish games, larger model count skirmish games, along the lines of say a Warm of Hordes or uh, Saga or Wrath of Kings, um, you know where you're in the the twenty five to forty. Um, miniatures per side type games then my go-to is going to be wrath of kings that's going to be my pick pretty much every time i think the way that they handle um that scale of war is so much better than anybody else 40k like i was watching i don't know if you guys were watching um like ash uh gorilla miniatures games earlier today he was uh live streaming a bunch of 40k games um the tournament he was playing at and I was like and I watched it and I just got kind of sad I was like okay I'll because I, I, I like I like Ash a lot absolutely love his channel it's like I idolize his channel um, uh, and and I was watching him play 40k and I was like okay other than the addition of bigger things this game is still the same it's still the same game fundamentally it's still and it's still not to me it's I, I you know if i don't find it again teach their own if you like 40k cool I'm, and, and please don't take this as any sort of attack on on your judgment or anything like that but i i don't like the game i don't find it entertaining i played it for 15 years and you know i've had my fill of it i guess right so i never i, I don't find the game or even its universe to be entertaining to me um uh and so i was watching ash play the game and going okay it's this is still the same stuff and i, I <laughs> so so i don't i you know i particularly don't like the way they handle that scale of game but in the defense i don't really like the way most of those games are handled Oh wow, it's a lot of Kickstarter talk here. That and Rising Sun Kickstarter, all about those minis. Yeah, I'm in on Rising Sun. Super happy about that. Uh, we got news that it's actually going to ship early, so I'm super happy about that. So, super stoked on that Rising Sun, man. I think that game looks awesome. The miniatures look amazing. We'll see how it goes. Do a little white here. Didn't have any wallet left for Rising Sun. That's a, you know, I was really on the fence with Rising Sun, but the more goals they kept hitting, I was like, dude, I can't, I can't say no at this point. <laughs> so I caved eventually and, and got in on it. But I think it was a good decision overall. We'll see. Board games for me are are uh, are dicey because I love board games, uh, specifically miniatures. Board game miniature that have miniatures in them, absolutely love them. But you know, I I have limited gaming time, and I really would prefer to play miniatures with my limited gaming time. 
So this whole let's play board games on my YouTube channel idea, this has kind of been a breath of fresh air for me and, you know, breaking out these games that I have and that I painted up and super was all at the time super excited about playing. And then, you know, eventually I started to get like really kind of depressed, you know, I, I, I painted that uh, second edition Mansions of Madness. And the minis weren't great for that game, but I wanted it anyways. Like, I wanted that game anyways, and I, when I finished painting it, I almost got, like, a little depressed because it's like, I'm never going to play this, you know? I'm going to ask people, hey, can I get five people to come play Mansions of Madness with me? And with all my friends basically being more miniature gamers than board gamers, they're going to be like, nah, dude, two of us want to go play Guild Ball. Two of us want to play Batman. Like... You'd be lucky to have one other person playing Mansions of Madness with you. So, and if that's what they're playing that night, I'm like, I want to play those too. I don't need to, uh, you know, I don't need to give up the whole evening. Again, with the multiplayer, like give up the entire evening to play uh, a multiplayer game. So, you know, when, so what uh, playing on stream allows me to do is, you know, essentially we get like kind of a bonus round with the, um, <clears throat> we get kind of a bonus round with the, the game time, right? It's a late night game. So I'm not, you know, I don't have family, you know, s waiting around for me, hoping I come home that night. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not intrusive. It doesn't really, the only thing I give up is a, a, a night of potential painting. So if I'm willing to give up one night of painting a week to play board games with you guys. I think it's totally worth it. <sighs> Let's see. You guys are talking like, you guys are in the weeds here talking about, uh, I th I'm going to assume you're talking about uh, Black Plague Zombicide. I'm going to assume. All right. Let's look at the uh, characters that I'm color blocking right now. So this commission is for 12 miniatures total, but I finished a set of five of them previously. Oh, those guys are done. I need to finish her. She's done. He's not done. He's super easy. Okay. Parker. And you got Tiff. That's like a guitar handle. Okay, interesting. And you got Nick. And Phil, Jane, okay, and James, right? So let's see. So this guy's basic. Oh, I turned the camera. Whoop. That's a problem. Uh, so basically, he's Scarface, so he's going to be mostly black. Uh, Tiff has a black overcoat, so she's going to be more on that side. He kind of has blues and greens, and she's got a lot of pale colors. Um, like denim and, and white. So let's, uh, let's start with her actually. So the denim is going to be like an azure color and then she's got like white jeans. Yeah. That's, I guess that's all we can really block on her. Okay. Well, let's, uh. Switch to the other airbrush. Which, where did it go? Uh, we're gonna do a little cleaning. Just out of curiosity, anybody else painting right now? Or uh, hoping to paint something? What? Did, let's do this. Name something you're hoping to finish painting this month. <laughs> How about that? Leave that in the comments. If you're any particular projects, maybe it's just a single piece. Who knows? The rabbit's going to be fun and have the full Monty Python crew on the board. Oh, yeah. So we're still talking uh, Black Plague. 
So let's see. For me this month, uh, I'm planning on I got to finish this Zombicide commission. Then I'm going to paint something. I'm going to take a little break, paint something fun for me, for myself. And then I'm going to get back into it and I'm going to paint some of the uh, extra life stuff that I awarded last night. Um, specifically, last night uh, we had uh, someone win the um, we had someone win. Uh, oh shoot! I needed to send out a link. Hold on. Um, someone won the uh, Heath Ledger Joker, and somebody else won the limited edition Mist. And both of those winners indicated that they wanted painted and assembled miniatures. So I'm going to work on that. Um, working on a commission that's almost done nice. Painting some Team Yankee. Sweet. I got the, I got like a free rule set of Team Yankee and have not looked at Team Yankee at all. So it sounds like you're, tell me a little bit about, oh, tell me a little bit about that game. Like, is it, how long have you been playing? Um, sorry. Had the little valve pop out on me. That always happens. Oh, that's interesting. Let's use this. Good game, fun game. Oh, Andrew made a comeback video. Nice. Oh yeah, before I actually start this blocking. Gosh, let me, uh, oh, I don't have a hangout link. It's essentially Flames of War, but based in the 80s. That sounds awesome. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. Gosh, I don't, people want like to be individually notified if I'm streaming stuff. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's kind of tough, man. That's a lot of like extra thing, but let me send it out here real quick. Yeah, it's fun. December, January is a big American release. Oh, cool. Okay. So they probably, I, I think they sent me the Team Yankee rulebook as like a promo through Miniature Market. I think, if I recall correctly, that's the reason why I have the, the rulebook. Um, hoping to finish some more of the others. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's send. Let me just send that out to here. There. Okay. And then let me reply to this real quick. Noise. Okay. So, anyway. Okay. Uh, and then let's actually get back to the painting. That's what we are here for, right? I think. Anybody else have this weird white color? This, well, this actually isn't a white color. This is actually going to be my denim color. So two of the characters kind of have a denim color. Parker has, like, denim... She has jeans and fifteen millimeter is not my favorite to paint, but it's quick. I have never been drawn to paint anything smaller than twenty five millimeter. Um, I have painted, like, if you guys remember the Battles of Westeros board game, I painted that, the core, you know, I guess it was Lannisters versus uh, Stark's core set. I painted that, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't actually, it wasn't that great, but it was, 
quick. So I'm kind of down for that. Okay, so a little bit of denim on her. Denim on her. Nobody else really has uh, denim on them. Get the jeans done. cream color, a gray color. Let's do, for now, let's do Homeboy's jacket, this color, just because it seems like he's going to have gray. Like a cold gray will actually be this color here. I have no idea what reference this character is, so you guys feel free to let me know because I have no idea. So there's that. Let's do uh, I guess I need like a I need a cream color real quick. Oh hey, what's up Nelson? Yeah, we're gonna do it's like a need like a desert yellow type color. See what I got. See what I got. I don't really have much Iraqi sand left. I need to get to the store and paint some or pick up some another set of uh, another fresh round of airbrush paints. I just you know you have a lot of paints and you just kind of replace them periodically when you need to. Okay, so it looks like Parker has this sort of beige-ish, that's a word, right? Beige-ish, beige -ish color, her top. Not much, hoping to chill with the rest of you tonight, cool. Beige color. Cool. Uh, anybody else need this beige color? Actually, she does for her guitar. She got it. She got a little axe handle. Pretty fancy there. And then she has two axes and a submachine gun. So she actually looks more like a fully equipped zombicide character, what they should look like. This dude here, he's gonna got, he's got like a green. So I gotta get a green color for, like a military green for the pants. The pants. There we go. Octave, we should all get together and watch Justice League when it comes out. Yeah, you're asking a you're asking a father of two small children to get to the movie theater. That's a that's a tall order, sir. <laughs> Not trying to kill your dream. I'm just like, yes, me. Uh, it's been su such a long time. Since I've had the ability to go into a movie theater, it's going to be a while. So, what I'm saying is, please don't wait for me. <laughs> go out and enjoy the movie. And it does look good. I am, I, I think Marvel has really done a lot of damage in me like in superhero films but dc looks like you know 
they're uh, they're going to be capable of putting together some stuff I'd want to watch. So that's good. Hey, what's up, Andrew? He would be down to see that. Okay. And once again, if anyone knows what these characters really are, let me know what the references are. I'm just curious. Like, because I'm following just the studio art for them, essentially, but I don't really know what they are. Like, I know Scarface, um, but I don't know, like, any of these other characters that I'm working on right now. Cool, cool. Can't stay on for long on a league team break real quick. <laughs> Gotta play that league, man. Do, 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 do. So, uh, yeah. So today was a fairly busy day. Um, we uh, went to Knott's in the morning. It's my company picnic. And we don't really stay for the picnic. We just kind of... Sounds a little messed up, but I usually just go for a little bit. Um, and then we take the ticket, because the company gives us a free ticket to go in. We take that ticket, and then we apply it towards next year's um, season pass. So that's really the big win, is like showing up and applying it to next year's season pass. So we did that, we went on really only like one ride. Um, and then we went straight to Japan Fair, OC Japan Fair, which was something like much hype for for uh, for us. We, we went to Japan Fair a couple of years ago and enjoyed it. Um, and then we went this year. Uh, and I gotta say, I was fairly underwhelmed <laughs> by Japan Fair. It seemed to be smaller. There seemed to be fewer vendors. There just wasn't a whole lot going on. And, uh, you know, it. one of the things that was pointed out to me was, oh, well, we liked it better when, you know, because you would just eat and listen to music, and that was cool. That's true. Because we went, we ate, we listened to music, and we were happy. I can't eat as much these days. And there wasn't any... There really wasn't any music while we were there, so that kind of killed the whole idea of being there. But it just seemed kind of, it just seemed kind of out of sorts. It was kind of embarrassing. Like we went to, uh, we went to a booth. Um, we like we went to one of the the food stands, right? And. He was like, oh, yeah, everything he said was like, oh, yeah, you know, we got really good boba here. And I'd say, okay, I'll take a boba. And he was like, well, we're kind of out of boba at the moment, and we're waiting for it to come in. But we have some really good skewers here. And we're like, yeah, we'll take some skewers. Well, we're out of two or three of the different kinds of meats, but we do have this skewer. I really like our coconut pie. And I was like, can we get some coconut? No, we're waiting on that <laughs> and I almost like screamed at the guy I'm like well what exactly are you telling us to do here because we <laughs> you keep telling us that you have these good things but then when we ask for them you don't actually have the good things like what I so I was it was frustrating um yeah and, and it was kind of a shame because again I like I like the OC Japan Fair, but it just, there was not much going on this year. And I don't know if we're going to go next year. It's, uh, yeah, I would ask the guy, do you sell food? Because it, it basically we're, it was coming down to that. We're like, what? what is the point of this guy? We don't understand. Do you sell food? That's, uh. That's a million dollar question, isn't it? Do you sell food? <laughs> Fuck.
flip the booth table. <laughs> but yeah, what a bummer, man. We were like, we were so amped to go to Japan Fair that we left knots early. Now again, it's not a big deal because we always have um, season passes for knots, but still, we left knots. We're like, we're getting hungry. Let's go to Japan Fair. Now that said, there are certain things there that I really like at Japan Fair. One of the things I really like is they they have a they have a, a stand that that makes uh, essentially potato pancakes, right? The, which are amazing. There's, it's like you make this like pancake mix kind of with like potato and you put cabbage in it you put some veggies in it and then you you uh you know you fry it up like you would you know you know any sort of like hash brown patty or something like that and then you put stuff on top of it and my favorite my personal favorite is the one uh with the uh with the spam and cheese on it they put like so they fry this thing up and then they then they put a piece of fried spam on top of it and then they put um you know some cheese and they let the cheese melt into that so uh so we really liked that and i got it with the fried squid and that was amazing and i love the fried squid um so that was good um i got some overpriced boba there that took a really long time for them to make it was like six dollar boba I'm like six dollar boba what the hell like most places around here orange county you can get boba from anywhere from like three to five dollars right typically and it's pretty good boba depending on where you're going whatever um i have a few spots that i like to hit for boba specifically it's been a while actually since since uh like i haven't gone to tapioca express in a while and that's one of my favorite spots for boba um but you know, when I, I guess what I'm saying is, like that was just uncalled for. Why do you have? Why should boba cost you? What color is this guy? Oh, it's kind of a blue. And we'll get that. Why is it going to cost you seven bucks for boba? And it's not even like, um, it's not even like the the slushy boba. Because sometimes that costs a little bit more, and I get that. So, whatever. It's kind of dumb. Um, so we got that. Uh, my wife got some matcha flavored ice cream, which was okay. Seemed pretty good. But then a lot of the other stuff we got was not just underwhelming. Everybody freaks out over the takoyaki. So there was like a giant line for takoyaki. But, you know... Again, not that, not that big a deal. What flavor boba do I like? Uh, great question. I like a lot of different flavors, but my, I think one of my favorite flavors of boba, honestly, is like white rose. I like white rose milk tea. Really nice. Um, if you can get a good, uh, you know, find a good spot for for white rose milk tea. Uh, the the poke dice up the street on El Toro, they make a good white rose milk tea. You could also get white ro or rose milk tea over at uh, Costa Mesa, that boba place. It's called that boba place. Just doing some color blocking. Um. Yeah, seven dollars. That shit better have pudding jelly boba and come in an extra. Yeah, no, dude. This was for a regular like sixteen ounce uh, green tea latte boba. That was it. And didn't have jelly, no egg pudding, nothing. Just boba. Fairly disappointing. And it took like ten minutes for them to make it, which I didn't understand. Like, you know, I've never had boba take that long to make. Um, thought about doing the, um, the, uh, sake tasting, because again, that's another thing that I really like is the sake tasting. And then even that kind of looked like a disappointment because it was like, well, um, oh, this is brown. That's good. 
because like one of the main featured sake there was Kurosawa. And Kurosawa is okay. Like I'll drink Kurosawa, but Kurosawa is a is a U.S. bottled brand. Like a lot, of, maybe people don't know that, but like I go to Japan Fair because I want to have, you know, I'm gonna be a snob here for a second, but I I want to go to a sake tasting and taste some authentic Japanese sake, you know, and they didn't even have that. So, uh, well, I better hop on my League of Legends game. <laughs> have a good night. Good night, Andrew. Um, but yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is I was somewhat disappointed. So. <laughs> The other thing that was weird about Japan Fair, you know, they were selling the the online tickets, the Groupon tickets were five bucks to get in, but you had to pay ten if you, you know, if you just walked up. And I was like, ten dollars for this was that's a lot. Five dollars is somewhat reasonable, but even that, like, kind of pushing it for what we got. Where's the damn authentic chap food? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was... It, yeah. It was lackluster, we'll say. It was not... It was not anything... It wasn't anything any of them should have been proud of, unfortunately. Oh, Trying to find a specific blue airbrush color that I like and I cannot find it a cool gray but that's not what I'm looking for that's the wrong blue that's totally the wrong blue better have some bomb sushi and the best seaweed yet yeah, we didn't have sushi there um and I think the it's because, you know, we're in Orange County. You can get uh, awesome sushi almost anywhere. <laughs> it's like we want we went to get like potato pancake stuff, and we went to get um, they had a they the year that we went they had this really awesome kind of deep fried um, hamburger patty. They took it's like ground beef, and they 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 um, they drop panko flake in it. And not like over the top, not like katsu. Like they, it's almost like, um, like meatloaf. And they put that in there, and that's super good. Um, and they didn't have it. That was like the one thing, you know, my wife was, like, looking forward to was having another one of those, and they didn't have it. <laughs> so it was like, so we spent, uh, I don't know, we spent almost a couple hours there, which was stretching it quite a bit. Like you could do. OC Japan Fair in like 21 minutes if you're just walking through it. As you can tell, I'm not giving the best or most glowing review of OC Japan Fair. Um, but and it, it, it breaks my heart because we were so amped to go. Like that was our thing this weekend. We were so excited about going. Uh, and that doesn't look like it's going to be a thing. So, <laughs> I, I, so tomorrow... Um, we have to go to a friend of ours' um, baby birthday, so it's another like child birthday party. But, but we may be able to do some gaming after. So I'm kind of excited for that. Um, and I don't know what time I'd get home. I would say maybe 4 p.m. or so. I might be able to sneak off for our game, or failing that. Um, we could play a little later, like almost towards the evening, kind of like how we do on Thursday nights. What happened? Why did that just disappear? That sucks. Am I going to have to re... What happened? Okay. <laughs> In 21 minutes... There's a Taiwanese food fair coming in November. Yes. I want to. Oh, yeah. Send me some info. My wife and I will probably want to go. 
because we do like food fairs when we do especially Asian food fairs yeah hopefully you don't hopefully it's gonna take longer than 21 minutes <laughs> This guy's outfit is just interesting. I do not get it. Got like a weird thermal jacket on. I don't understand this character at all. <laughs> Dragon Bile will help with that. Okay. <laughs> so there's just like a whole other conversation on Black Play going on. <laughs> Which is kind of awesome. Okay. I, it, this is driving me crazy though. Where's my color that I need? Eh, it's gonna show up. It's gonna show up. Do -do 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 -do. Also, Nelson, I did check with uh, CQ today to see if um, they got any of the resin Batman kits, and they did not. So, that's kind of another bummer. I was like, ah, oh. Because I do want to get that, uh, that Blackgate Prisoner set. Not that I don't have the money for it right now, but whatever. Yeah, that's okay. We're gonna do this. We gotta, we gotta get moving. And these, I don't know why I'm just like dragging my feet, getting these done. Should be painting. I should be moving at a much faster pace than this. That's okay. Whatever. What character are you painting now? This guy. Well, I'm working on a batch of seven of them, but this guy is Nick. So I guess he is the Bruce Willis character or he was at one point and I just don't get or if that is in fact if he still is Nick but I don't know so I'm just gonna drop little hints of blue there we go by the way what is your opinion on these resins Seems like building and pinning is involved. Well, you know, I worked with resins plenty of times with or between Arena Rex and uh, Relic Knights, so I kind of want to be holding one in my hand before I say what I think about them. But you know, I, I can confidently say, even if you did have to build and pin them, it's still easier, still a nicer experience than the metals that Knight has. The Knight metal kits were just... Well, you, you'd hear me bitching about those non-stop. So... Okay. So that looks right. Um, I actually want to give her slightly darker jeans. So we're going to color in her jeans just a little bit more. Okay. And there's really only one la uh, one color left to block, and that's like a that's like a black gray color. And then once the color is blocked, we can actually get to some painting. The interesting thing is black gray is such a damn good color. It's like such a versatile color. But it seems to me all the Vallejo black grays that I've worked with are just absolutely horrible going through airbrush. Especially the, the, the model color ones that I bought. They're just not good for going through an airbrush. Uh, not model color, game color. Or sorry, model air. Not model color, model air. Because I'm gonna put model color 
through the airbrush right now. Oh, thanks. She does have a cool sword. Um, so if you thin model color, it works better than the model air for some reason. Which just doesn't make sense. It should be the other way around. Blackgate guys are very cool indeed. See, from what I saw though, Nelson, is it, it looked like they were all pretty much one piece miniatures. I didn't really see anything that was more than say two pieces. You know, you can you have to pin them to the base, but that's like nothing compared to the metal. You know, having to deal with the metal kit. I'm just going to build a little black there towards the hilt of the sword. Kind of build out a little color gradient. And then... The machine gun and the... And the jacket. This isn't atomizing the best, but it's okay. Pretty much does the trick there. Okay, and everybody kind of gets this black, at least in some parts. I think you misread earlier. I did say less pinning. Oh, oh, less pinning, yeah. Yeah, less pinning is always good. <laughs> if you have to do less pinning. And this is from somebody that pins everything. Like, I'm kind of a pinning... I'm, like, addicted to pinning stuff. But I hate it. I hate pinning. I'm just so used to doing it, though. That if you tell me that I don't have to do it one day, then I get a little scared. I'm like... Instinctively, I'm like scared of the change, but then I'm also happy. There we go. Forgot to do her base too. Like the black gray didn't mix that well so I'm gonna have to stir it up a little bit more yeah it's weird it's just I don't know what's up with black gray why it why it has such a prob hard time coming out coming through the airbrush Finally, this guy, who's pretty much all, <laughs> this guy's pretty much all black-gray.
Okay, anybody else? Am I missing? I think that's it. Okay, let those dry for a sec and clean out my airbrush. And then we're gonna get to the painting proper. Hope your kid's feeling better, Octave. I know he was under the weather. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they're both, they're both still kind of feeling it. Kind of a bummer. My wife is still, I mean, she's still kind of under the weather too. So it's been kind of a bad week for, for everybody here. I'm still, knock on wood, I'm still doing all right. We'll see. Do, 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 do. So we can get to some regular ass painting, which is good. So yeah, so after I'm done with these 12, Nelson, uh, which should be tonight or tomorrow, I'll get these back to you, but I'm gonna ask for a week off so that I can get caught up on some of the extra life stuff. So then I can do the next 12. Actually, that's not true because I can still base the next 12 and kind of do what I did here where, you know, you color block. Whew. You can color block a bunch of it, base it and color block it and then come back and paint it as you need to. All right, so now I need to do a general dry brush. Ooh, so I'm gonna use this guy. Actually, might be time to switch air uh, dry brushes. Might have to open, yeah, let's open a brand new one. So this is the dry brush I use, the e ELF or ELF uh, makeup brushes, right? You can get these at like the 99 cent store. Oh, you're not a pain in the ass, dude. Don't even sweat it. Super, super appreciate it, actually. Um, it's just, uh, I'm just going to ask to pace it a little bit as we go through October, because October is a rough, kind of a rough month with Extra Life and all the other stuff. Sup? What's up, Dave Snodgrass? Welcome to the uh, feed. So we're painting some Zombicide stuff. So let's go ahead and... Get going. Uh, so we're gonna start off. So always do like a really, really fine. Um, you can do a white dry brush. I do something very pale. Doesn't have to be white. Um, like a pale blue gray. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be a a wolf gray. And uh, yeah, if this is one of your first times watching the feed. Oh, hey, what's up, Jam Jar? Doing well, buddy? Thanks for uh, thanks for joining the feed. If you guys are wondering, the uh, the top part of the the chat is actually the YouTube chat, and the bottom part is the Twitch chat. So I am simulcasting on YouTube and Twitch at the same time because I'm fancy like that. <laughs> So now we're going to just hit this with ever so lightly with a pale, like a wolf gray uh, dry brush. And I'm just hoping to just catch edges. I don't need, you know, I, I'm not hoping to leave a texture or anything like that. Just want enough of the edges picked up so that when we start to shade it down, that those edges will stay. That's all we're trying to do. Kind of a weird technique, but I found that this works best for, uh, you know, when you, when you airbrush a model kind of above where it's supposed to be, and then, um, and then shade down, which is, that's kind of my approach 
when I'm working on figures like these. Uh, let's see. Makeup brushes make awesome dry brushes. They do. And again, if you if you go to like the dollar store or big lots, 99 cent store, you can always find stuff like this. Um, and I just keep a supply of them. Like I'll, cause it, they're so cheap that I'll keep them. I'll keep one for, you know, four or five months. And then once it's starting to just, they eventually start to get too stiff. Like they start to collect paint cause you just don't do the best job cleaning them off or whatever. So eventually you're just going to get a collection of solid paint film build up on it. And then you, that point you can just throw it away, start off with a brand new one. And there you go. Oh, she does have a, there's another weapon there. Okay. And so it's like stuff like this, um, this is this is the one where you have to be careful, right? Because you still want him to be mostly black, but you want to pick up edges like the edges of around the blazer. You want to pick up edges around the shoulder. You want to pick up the lapel. But you don't want what you don't want is you don't want this like big textured thing there. Chatting on two sites at once. The future is here. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, the idea is uh, I am trying to build the Twitch following, like I said. So I do need to get to 50 followers on Twitch. Um, and I like having a, a little more diverse audience. <gasps> diverse, I use that. I used the buzzword, but yeah. So you'll see more simulcast games on the Twitch. Oh, off camera. Yeah, sorry, dude. Uh, Game Gear makes some brush cleaning soap that will vastly improve the life of your brush. Would you say it's better than the Masters uh, brush soap? Because I like the Masters brush soap. But honestly, I only use Masters brush soap for stuff like um, for my, uh, you know, Series 7 stuff. Do, 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 do. And then finally this guy. And once we do like eyes and skin, they're going to be caught up with the other three that are in process. Once again, so you can see I'm just picking up just edges, nothing, not trying to you know, shatter the world or anything with this type of dry brush. It's one of those less is more type situations, right? Okay. <clears throat> so now we can start working on eyes and skin and get ourselves caught up with the other, the other side of this uh, commission so we're gonna need some black gray again and we're gonna need some white and I'm gonna need my actual an actual actual painting brush it's cheap so you use it for everything nice is it is it uh, you like more UK available or do you think because I, I haven't seen like brush soap available outside of masters here in uh, here in the U.S. So, doot, doot, doot. so we're gonna do eyes are always a little bit weird on these because they are a smaller scale than you know the 32 or 35 that you paint. These might be closer to 25 or 28. So. And she does have the action open mouth pose. So we'll put a little black right in the mouth just to do a little bit of shading.
Oh, you're in Kansas. Hey, oh, people. What's up, Evan? And you can get more American than that. That is literally true. I was, uh, fun fact, I was born in Kansas. But left Kansas when I was five years old, so I have very little recollection of it. <clears throat> Interesting tidbit. Yes, El Cholo. Uh, let's see. Andrew was hilarious with his Viet and China man accent last night. I wish he kept the Hispanic so Cholo accent too while Dizzy does some Canadian or Aussie accent while playing Zombicide. We'd have to work on that. My, uh, I have to work on my Hispanic accent a little bit more. I do really bad everything accents. But, you know, I can own them, which is... That's the, that's the upside. <laughs> Superman says so. <laughs> yeah, fun fact. I, uh, I am named for the town I was born in, in Kansas. Uh, so if you're familiar with a tiny little town called Chanute, Kansas, in, uh, in the state of Kansas, the uh, the town is named for a man named Octave Chanute. He was a aeronautics engineer, uh, I believe, originally from Germany, and uh, he did a lot of a lot of the the innovations, the aeronautic innovations that he did. He was actually also, uh, I believe, an uh, an architect, um, but a lot of his Aeronautic in innovations and that kind of thing were in, were uh, used and adopted by the Wright brothers. So they often cite him as a as one of their influences slash mentors. Uh, and I'm named for that uh, for that man. Uh, so I was born in Chinook, Kansas, and uh, when I was born, I you know there was a thing I was visited by uh, Octave Chinook's descendant was also named Octave Chanute. And there was an interesting little thing. Like there's a, I have like a newspaper clipping of me as a little baby visiting with this, uh, with this man. So yeah, that's where I get the weird name. Uh, what? Awesome. Is it Sunday over there? It is not Sunday over here. Not yet, anyways. It will be in a little under 90 minutes. It'll be Sunday over here. Man, I'm like hitting the camera right now with my brush, my hand, and all kinds of stuff. Her eyes are a little close together, but we'll, we'll just see how that goes. I noticed that's more common in female miniatures because the heads are more narrow. But you're going to get eyes that get too close stuck together. Where am I now? I'm out in Orange County, California. So I, uh, uh, so I was born in Kansas and was there till I was five years old. We moved to Connecticut and I lived on the East Coast till I was ten or eleven years old, and then been in California. Moved all the way out to the West Coast and been in California ever since. I have not been back to Chinute or Leavenworth or Middletown or any of those cities in Can. I haven't been to Kansas. I haven't been back to Kansas since I was five years old. So I really couldn't tell you anything about it. Other than, yeah, that's where I was born. Orange County, on the other hand, I can tell you all about and completely unimpress you with facts about Orange County. Let's see. Uh, cool. That's interesting story behind your name. Thanks, man. 6.30 across the pond. 6.30 a.m. Yeah. 
Hoping Dread Lund wakes up soon. And he pops on. He and I have always been talking, like, we always talk about maybe we'll do, we wanted to do a stream together. But it's so hard to line up the time. But man, the stuff he works on is just so freaking awesome. Love Dreadlin. What makes it even more interesting is like, I only understand him like half the time. <laughs> Because of his, his, he has a really thick accent, and I, I have a hard time following him sometimes. But yeah, his that dude's skills are incredible. Not much to say about Kansas. <laughs> well, I remember it being super flat. Like, some of the only memories I have of Kansas are, uh, uh, so my dad, uh, he, he was a, he's a physician, so he was like, he had a clinic in, uh, I believe, what, well, maybe it wasn't Chanute, might have been Leavenworth, no, Chanute, I think, and uh, one day uh, a man came in uh, who got bit by a tarantula, I think he was keeping it as a pet. And he wanted to get rid of the tarantula. And uh, my dad was like, I'll take the tarantula. And he gave it to me. And I had a pet tarantula. I was, you know, I couldn't have been three years old. And a pet tarantula. <laughs> and uh, uh, my mom, oh, she hated that thing. She hated that thing. And I think I recall having the tarantula for about a week. And one day it disappeared. And me being three years old, didn't remember again till I was... Maybe five years old, six years old. Hey, what happened to my pet tarantula? My mom didn't tell me. She never told me and until like, uh, you know, 25 years later, she would admit to me that she took that thing outside and it was in a, I kept it in a jar. She took it outside and smashed the entire jar. <laughs> she hated that tarantula so bad. My brother and I would go on to get a second pet tarantula when we were like 17, 16, 17. Yeah, I was 16. He was, he was 17. <laughs> this thing bit a man. I know. I'll give it to my son. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much how it went down. My dad. Uh, my dad's a little bit of a a risk taker. We'll say. He was a. Uh, you know, old school dad used to, in Kansas, um, we had a, he had a white Granada, if you remember what kind of car that is. And uh, one of his favorite things to do to entertain me was uh, put me in that car uh, without a seatbelt, because hey, it was the late 70s, uh, and just jump over the little those little grassy hills and he would just catch air over those hills like hit those he'd hit the hills as fast as he could catch air and i would just fly and bounce around the car and it was the best time ever and no one died so there yeah my mom killed it she didn't just let it go she, no she made th sure that thing died it was she would admit it to me much later in life that that's what she did <laughs> you know you have Asian parents. They, uh, we'll just say Asians aren't exactly known for their, uh, for being gentle with animals. All right. If I'm just being completely raw with you guys, uh, when I was, uh, I want to say eight years old or nine years old, my dad used to take us to, when we lived in Connecticut, my dad used to take us to the, uh, uh, the reservoir up in Connecticut and we'd go fishing at the reservoir and we'd catch, you know, sunfish, maybe, maybe some trout, nothing really earth shattering there. But we, me and my brother always caught weird crap. Like we caught slider turtles. So we had pond turtles and, you know, we'd take them home and, and we put them in a, a wading pool. And we had these, we had two of those turtles, right? And then one day, uh, we were at the reservoir and we caught an eel 
and that was the coolest thing ever. You know, you're an eight, nine year old kid, and you you, caught, you catch an eel, and you're like, oh my god, this is so awesome. We brought the eel home, and we put it in the waiting pool, right? And so, uh, so that Monday we went to school, uh, and then we came home, and the eel was gone. And like, you know, there's no, we're landlocked. There's nowhere for this eel to go. The turtles will st were still there, um, and uh, we're like, where, where did the where did that eel go? So it disappeared Monday. Tuesday, we went back to school, you know, still wondering where our eel went. And then uh, I'm sure Nelson knows where this is going. Um, <laughs> so Tuesday evening, we get, we're, I'm going through the refrigerator. I want like, you know, I wanted a glass of milk or something like that, right? Um, and so I'm going through the fridge and I see this plate that has like a little little bit of uh, tin foil over the top and I'm looking and I'm like what's you know what's in this plate it looks like leftovers or something and uh, there's these little squares just little squares of meat and I'm like what's what's that um, didn't pay any attention to it and then uh, you know finally like towards the end of the week you know we asked my dad like hey do you know what happened to that eel that we caught and he's like I ate it <laughs> I was like, wait, you, you ate our pet? He's like, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to eat eel. I ate the eel. So, <laughs> you know, traumatized us a little bit. But that's that's when we understand that the, the, uh, the Asian mentality when it comes to food. Like, eel is good eating. You don't just, that would be like, you know, us bringing home a cow or a chicken going yeah we're gonna keep it as a pet you know and you go and you like that beef or you like chicken i love chicken i think chickens are are kind of dumb animals but they're entertaining but you know i'm gonna eat it that's that's uh that's gonna be that that's me <laughs> my mom used to throw away my toys and when i'd ask her was she'd say the last place you put it <laughs> well, that's rough. She threw away toys. That's tough. Why did she throw away toys? Did she just think you had too many, or were they, were the toys somehow upsetting to her? I don't know. My mom never threw away any of my toys, at least not on purpose. But yeah. So when I was, I think, yeah, when when we were 16 and 17, we had a pet tarantula, and we had I I, I had a small reptile collection. Um, I had some white tree frogs and that kind of stuff. I had a a tiger salamander, um, and I had a few other things. And my dad would look at those and go, "Hmm, those frogs look like they're good eating." And I had to tell my dad to lie to my dad and tell my dad that they were poisonous, so that he wouldn't eat them. <laughs> eels always scare me they look like snakes <laughs> eels good eating though i i will admit you know if you have um i like it that eel sushi the the cooked eel sushi it's it's a little sweet but it's still good so yes i was traumatized by that a little bit but then you know you get a little older start appreciating cuisine a little bit more and you're like hey you know my dad wasn't he wasn't wrong eel is good eating why can i not get this very edge here there we go There we go. <sighs> Let's see. Kid toys are annoying and loud. I always lost loud toys. I hope your parents never bought you a cat. Oh, no. My my parents were, you know, they're Filipino, um, uh, devout Roman Catholic. And um, 
they were terrible. My dad terrified of cats. The weirdest thing. You know, we're talking about my dad is a tough. He is a tough sob man. Like he, uh, you know, he grew up in the in the roughest neighborhoods in you know outside of Manila. Uh, he did boxing, gambling. You know, he wasn't the he wasn't the most upstanding person for a while there growing up in the rough parts of town. Um, so he's what I'm saying is he's seen some stuff. My mom, one of her very earliest memories in life, tragically, was burying my grandfather during World War II, where he was, you know, he was fighting for their farm, and the Japanese came. He uh, took some shrapnel from a grenade slowly bled out he died like died over three days it was one of the one of her first memories was burying this man in the rain when she was uh uh when she was i don't know i think five years old okay so what i'm saying is my parents have seen some shit but what are they terrified of cats they are they were just deathly afraid of cats and uh my wife and i uh, love cats. I wasn't a cat person for the longest time growing up because I could never have a cat. Uh, and then, you know, one of my most serious girlfriends growing up, her mom was a crazy cat lady. And I was actually allergic to cats when uh, when I was first uh, exposed to them. So I'd always, you know, end up sneezing, getting really itchy, that kind of thing. But she had so many damn cats that eventually... Like it just eventually, I just got desensitized to it, so I was cool with cats, and and at that point, I was like, I want to just have a cat. I like cats. Um, <laughs> Jam jar, good eating. A phrase from Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're afraid of cats because you know they're, you know they're they're thinking like witchcraft. They're like afraid of. You know that that cat's a possessed creature, or something. And even it's weird because like even some of my my older brothers are like afraid of cats too. So no one has owned cats in the family except you know now I have cats, and uh, some of the grandkids now have cats. Let's see. Oh, okay. I went to an ad. And we were talking about food and come back and we we're burying people. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, I was in the in a really dark, dark way. I was just trying to demonstrate the point that, uh, you know, my parents are uh, they come from the they come from the third world. OK, and they they had seen some really, really messed up stuff in their time and they come over here and you think what what the hell do these people have to be afraid of and it's it's cats <laughs> that's all i was trying to say they're just terrified of cats um but yeah <laughs> so terrified of cats snakes um i never kept a snake growing up in with my parents i kept uh, I kept a, a giant carnivorous lizard. I had a black and white tegu. Um, and I had her, I actually had her for 16 or 17 years, I think, before she finally passed on. She was like my kitty cat, loved that little one. She grew to about four feet. And uh, I would feed her, you know, you feed her like frozen mice and uh, rabbit. Um, but she would also eat cat food eggs earthworms you know all that kind of stuff that was my little girl um and so you know when my wife met me and i was in orange county i had this giant uh terrarium in my living room with a with a giant carnivorous lizard in the middle of it <laughs> and yeah sometimes you know Going to my house when I was single, I'm sure was an interesting experience for some of the ladies that I brought over there, because they would see a giant carnivorous lizard out in the living room, and uh, you know if they were if they were nosy and they popped open any of the cabinets out in the hallway, they'd see a bunch of miniatures <laughs> and wonder what the hell what the hell are these. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, parents hate cats. I was just saying Asian parents eating your cat wouldn't help stereotypes. That's all. Or dog. Dog is also another one of the stereotypes. Um, let's see. That said, I try eating a cat or a dog. Never understand why Americans get caught up in animals we can and can't eat. I couldn't eat a dog. I couldn't eat a dog. Cats. I've dissected cats in school. Dogs. I don't know. I just... Ah, it's just, I, I don't know, it's like, cats are, I think, I give them a, a little bit of a harder time because cats, they just, they're just not as innocent as, as a, a good dog is, you know, there's some really rabid, like, nasty dogs out there, but like, if you have a good, loyal, sweet dog, like, you don't want anything to come to that, and if you have to hear a dog, like, oh, I, I don't even want to get into it, but like, the thought of like, putting a dog down, with the intention of eating it. <laughs> Frozen rabbit, I'm keeping my bunnies away from you for sure. No, I don't, uh, I don't have any reptiles uh, anymore, Nelson. Um, when, when, my, uh, when my boys get old enough, we'll probably get them a bearded dragon. You know, something simple. And bearded dragons, you can feed them, you can feed them little, the little um, pinky mice, but you wouldn't feed them rabbit. A much bigger lizard that you're gonna feed a rabbit to. <laughs> the Orkin guys refer to our house as the D and D house. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder, like, uh, my even my wife, like the first night, the first night before we were married, and she stayed over my place. She's nosy. My my wife is she's a little on the nosy side. Let's just be real here. Uh, she got up and she was kind of like looking for stuff and got into my cabinets. And she was like, every little cabinet she opened had like a couple space marines in there, like a vehicle. She's like, there's all these little people in your cabinets. Like, yeah, that's uh, that's my hobby. But she knew about it. Like when we. It's so like one of the first things we learned about each other was just she asked me, like, tell me something embarrassing about yourself, like right out of the gate. And I was like, well, I played this game. It's called Warhammer 40,000. And I told her all about it. Again, this was back when I used to play a game called Warhammer 40,000. Why does he look like a zombie? He almost, I, I guess it's the expression on his face. This guy, he's looking like a zombie himself. They actually did a really good job sculpting the face, though. It does look like Al Pacino. But I'm going to have to cut the... I'm going to have to cut around these eyes really well. Uh, so I can relate to single nerdy... Uh, guys bringing ladies over. Yeah, I had stuff like that. There was one, um, I, I know I've told this story on my feed a couple of times, but there was a whole, um, you know, if you guys are old enough to remember the show Three's Company, there was like a whole episode that of, of a date of mine that kind of went like that. Uh, I'll tell it again if... Uh, just for the hell of it, since we're kind of just screwing around. So, uh, so yeah. So when I was single, uh, I used to go and play uh, at a at a games workshop. And this games workshop was uh, located in a place called the Block. Okay, and the Block is basically an outdoor mall down here in uh, Orange County. Uh, and it has you know it has a movie theater, it has a bunch of restaurants, bars. Um, it's got shops and that kind of stuff, right? Um, because all the cocaine he's no <laughs> Super Scarface. Um, half of them are even painted. Wait, hold on. I use it as a pickup line. Hey, ladies, I have 10,000 points of orcs. What's your current man got for you? <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, the block is, it's kind of a, hang it was at least one point, it was like a hangout, right? 
for people, young adults, you know, you, it, the teenagers would be there during the day and then at, towards the evening. It got, a, it got more of like a, a light bar scene, right? Because they had bars and stuff that you could go to at night. Um, so I used to go there, though, during the day, like after work. Um, it was on my sort of on my way home from work. It was close. Uh, so I would, you know, keep my put my uh, 40K army in my car um, and then uh, drive there on the way home from work, pick up a game or two, play a game of 40K, and then go home, right? So uh, so I did that one day. I had a, uh, we were playing in a, uh, a league at the shop and uh, I had to get my game in and it was like a Friday night, right? So I got my game in uh, early in the day, like got off work, went to the block, brought, had my army in my car, uh, got my game in, and then I was done and uh, I was like, you know, and the girl I was dating was like, oh, you know, do you want to go meet for drinks after work? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be at the block. So we met at the block. Um, my parents ate my pets. I hung out at the block. I sure you didn't grow up in a dystopian novel. <laughs> uh, anyway. So she, she goes and meets me there, right? And we, we go out, we have dinner, we have a couple of drinks. Um, she's one of those, we'll call her a muggle or a filthy normie, whatever terminology you like to use. I like fr filthy normie a little bit better than muggle. Um, and we'll just say that this girl and I may be not the most compatible fit, right? Uh, she, was, she was a lot more mainstream, um, did, was a little, actually a little intimidated by I guess into what we would consider to be more intellectual type hobbies like you know gaming right so it's after dinner we've had a couple of drinks or whatever and she's like yeah let's just kind of let's let's wander around a little bit so so she wants to wander around the block so we're wandering around the block and uh and the, and the whole time I'm, I'm kind of wondering to myself like oh gosh let's not Hopefully, let's not stumble into that GW. I'll just kind of glaze by it, and uh, we'll just keep moving, right? So, uh, so that's so we're go, we're rounding the corner, and the the Games Workshop is there, and like I'm just trying to change the subject or get us to turn or whatever. And she's like, "What the hell is this Games Workshop? Why do?" Like, are, are they built, do you go in here to build games? Why is it a workshop? Are there like elves in there making this kind of stuff? So she thinks it's weird and nerdy and, you know, wants to poke fun at it, right? She's like, let's go in there. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't think you want to go in there. It looks kind of weird. There's like weird demons in the demon miniatures on the, you know, on the, the uh, display glass, that kind of thing. I'm like, I don't think you want to go in there. She's like, and, you know, by this time she's already walked in. So she's walked into the, the shop, right? And the store manager's there and he's like, hey, you know, welcome to Games Workshop and all this other kind of stuff, like trying to talk her, tell her about the, the universe, the 40, Warhammer 40K universe and the grim darkness of the far future, all this kind of stuff. She thinks this is just the most pathetic crap ever right um she's like what is this nerd shit yada 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 um so she's just kind of standing there incredulously looking at the store manager and you know it goes without say the store manager knows me because i go in there and game all the time and, and in fact he and i go go back quite a few years um before he was a, a gw store manager and so he's like what it's not it's not nerdy like and he points over at me, and I'm, like, hiding off in the, the other, like, across the store. <laughs> like, I'm hiding by the entrance. Like, can we please just get the F out of here, right? He's like, what? Octave plays these games. And she looks at me, like, sideways, like, wait, you play these games? And I was like, ah, oh, yeah. And, you know, and I look, at the, I look at the manager, like, dude, you just outed me. That sucks. Uh, but it, it was all good. Because I was like, yeah, I do play these games. They're kind of cool. Yada, yada. And she's like, you're a nerd. 
I was like, um, yeah, I am one, I, I guess, you know. And for those of you who have heard my diatribe of what is a nerd these days, then, you know, uh, obviously you know how I actually feel about that term. But, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, that was just one of those things where I was, like, outed during the date for playing Warhammer 40k. <laughs> Glad you never married her. You probably wouldn't be who you are today with some awesome paint skills and fantastic humor. <laughs> well, she turned out to be a really good friend of mine. I mean, we're still, we're actually still really good friends. The interesting thing there is, um, so we went on a few dates. We dated for each, each other for a little while, but it was just completely glaringly obvious that we were not compatible. We were good friends. We liked each other's company. And that kind of thing but fun we were fundamentally incompatible so what we actually arrived at a kind of a different arrangement we agreed to be each other's wingmen because it's like okay like we both agreed you know nobody was heartbroken we're like no this is just th this isn't a thing we're still friends we like hanging out with each other but like anything beyond that is non-existent so we agreed that we would be each other's wingmen so we continued to go out on the weekends um, we would go out to the clubs or the bars or whatever, but the whole idea was, it's like, you know, if, if, um, if she met a guy, I would check out the guy, make sure he was safe, yada, yada, yada. If, uh, <clears throat> if I met somebody, she would do the same, check out the girl, talk to her in the bathroom, see what's going on. And, you know, and I, I've, I've said this as advice, I've given this as, as advice many times, like if you're single, you know, you, and you want to go to the bar, you want to go to the club and meet somebody. Not the best idea to begin with, but if you're going to do it that way, um, female wingmen, way better than male wingmen. Okay, way better. <laughs> Let's see, Dave Snodgrass says, yeah, we work at a game workshop. We love having grandmothers coming in and saying, my grandson wants a blood crusher. <laughs> um, yeah. They're the, they're the best, they're the best wingmen because it's, you know, and I've heard it explained too, like, uh, if you go in, if you go into a bar and you go in with a pack of guys, it just, it looks, it looks suspect, right? There's a lot of high fives going on. Guys say stupid shit when they're in packs and they just dare each other to do stupid shit. Not the best, not the best light to be presenting yourself to a, pr pr a prospective mate, right? However, if you go in with a with a girl, you go in with a female, then that automatically tells them, "Hey, this guy's probably safe. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's got to be at least remotely capable of carrying a conversation because you kind of need to have to have that ability if you're going to have regular female company." And then there's sort of the intrigue factor: Am I cuter than her? Would he, are they, are they, those two an item? Um, you know, would he be interested in me? You know, that whole thing. So that worked out really well, actually, like having the, having a female wingman because of those reasons, like, um, and, uh, you know, I was able to get a few dates that way, a few ra rather interesting <laughs> dates, uh, from having a female wingman, um, so. Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, I was dating a girl who started telling me as a horoscopes. I realized we better be friends, but hey, there is now there's Tinder, which as I understand it really isn't dating. People, the young guys that tell me like Tinder is something, it's like a dating simulator. It's not quite, <laughs> whatever it is, it, it is actual human interaction, but we're not really sure what it's classified as. <laughs> Man, oh, why are my comments like cutting off on the, do it, it's weird. Maybe I need to make it wider. I guess that's just how it, whatever. This is just kind of how it goes. Telling me about her horoscope. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, um, you know, when my, uh, when my wife and I met, we didn't, we, we kind of agreed with each other that we don't want to get married. We don't ever want to have kids. We don't want to have families. 
and we saw how that turned out. So, <laughs> but you know, but now we tell each other like, I can't believe we didn't want this. <laughs> we see our kids running around like, I can't believe like, I remember not wanting this, but it's still hard to believe that we didn't want this. So, it's all good. It's all kind of cool. Uh, on a phone, I fat finger some of my comments. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, I don't know. There is a. I think it's because of the uh, the generation I'm in and the particular environment I'm in um, that I like to keep uh, a health. What I consider to be a uh, a separation of, you know, this life as a hobbyist and gamer and what I would consider my quote unquote normal adult life, right? There's just, it, it's just not as well understood and accepted amongst uh, just the, the generation just above the millennials, the Gen Xers, and even less so amongst the uh, amongst the boomers because you know the boomers were the ones that were saying oh well you know if you play D&D &D, you worship the devil you're going to kill yourself uh, it's the worst thing ever for you uh, you don't want to read comic books you don't want that's those are those are childish things you don't want to be involved in that kind of stuff right and then the meanwhile the millennials kind of took it the other took it to the other extreme like oh well everybody better like Firefly, or you're a horrible person, um, or you know everybody better wear a Captain America T-shirt, and uh, that whole thing. So, so if you're, what I'm trying to say is that if you're, if you're a Gen Xer, then you have been, uh, you've been chastised for your, your hobbies and uh, and fandoms by the. Uh, by the the right wingers, the conservative um, folks, authoritarian folks in the uh, the baby baby boomer generation, and likewise, you've been chastised, and you've likely been chastised and uh, criticized by the authoritarian left folks in the younger generation, right? It's the same sort of judgment. Oh, you play you play D and D, or you read these comic books. Well, do you know that they're deeply misogynist, or that they're racist, or something like that? So if you're my age, you, you have been around long enough to get criticized by both sides for liking the same thing um, and by, by two different generations of people, but for ultimately the same reason. Oh, you got to take off. Have a good one, Jam Jar. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. I look like Blanca, so dating really is in the cards for me. On the bright side, more time to spend on the hobbies than YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. There's some, there's, I'm sure there's some girls out there that, that, uh, that like Blanca. Blanca's real name is Billy, right? <laughs> Billy? <laughs> you know. I don't know. Blanca's pretty cool. He's a, he's a fit guy. He's got a cool hairdo. Does, uh, you know, electrocutes people. These are all good things. Um, yeah, my coworkers found out. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep jumping between comments, but uh, Dave Snodgrass says, yeah, my co-workers found out I play D&D. &D. They asked me if D&D &D makes me want to kill people. I replied, no, that's you. <laughs> I imagine growing up in Kansas, you play D&D, &D, Jesus hates you. <laughs> yeah, I used to listen to this. I, I, I vividly remember the, like the anti D and D pamphlets that you'd get, uh, you know, saying you were going to be a devil worshiper and all that stuff. Super funny. <laughs> so we have someone replying to Cheddar Monkey. Dave is replying to Cheddar Monkey across from Twitch to YouTube. <laughs> There's a billion people in this world. Someone will love you, Blanca dude. <laughs> true it's actually kind of a cool thing to, I don't know I look like Blanca it's 
interesting exercise would be. Try to describe yourself as a perpetrator to the police. Like imagine, imagine you had committed a crime and uh, you know, there's some innocent passerby there, sees you running by and has to describe you to the police. What do you think they're gonna say? Because <laughs> I have some ideas what they might say about me. Um, you know, they'll say, well, he was Asian and he kind of had a funky hairdo. He was wearing shorts and sandals. He had a little bit of facial hair. And I couldn't tell how old he was because he's Asian. And he was kind of snickering the whole time. <laughs> they made a movie, Darkest Dungeon, based on it. Well, it was interesting. Even like Mazes and Monsters, the old Tom Hanks movie, kind of tackled it a little bit. All right, so let's do a little bit of wash on the skin. We'll, we'll use a, we'll do a flesh wash. Yeah, Tom Hanks didn't help the D&D situation at all. I know, right? But that's when I really, that at that point, I was like, what, 16, 17? Um, well, Mises and Monsters was out uh, uh, quite a few years before. I really, I, I started playing D&D when I was in the fifth grade, so that was like 85, and I think Mises and Monsters is still even a few years prior to that um but yeah you know fifth sixth grade we played we were playing D, D in the basement or in our in our case we would play in our in our shed so you know it was kind of like the stranger things um type scenario And that's actually how uh, how I got into miniature painting. It's because we, we were playing D&D. &D. Um, we like to have sketches of our characters. And back then, there wasn't a lot of people using uh, miniatures for their D&D &D games. But there were a lot of miniatures starting to be made. Um, you know, Grenadier, uh, Reaper. Um, there were a few... A few of those names around at the time and they were lead miniatures and um, we bought we bought a bunch of those miniatures and testers enamels and tried painting some and they looked awful and then we went back and found some better paint to use uh, and then this is when really when games workshop start was starting to come up and we discovered like the first time I saw a space marine like it like my mind nearly exploded I'm like whoa that is freaking amazing um so we got into that um but yeah that's that was really the start of it the start of me painting miniatures was um was playing D&D &D. uh whereas I think a lot of other people the you know people younger than me they get into painting miniatures probably these days also by D, &D but then also by uh you know games workshop stuff they start with games workshop and that that gets them into uh painting miniatures uh let's see every generation has something they have to hate even caveman did it kids these days with their fire when I was young, we were cold and we liked it. <laughs> I like that. Kids would fire the, the older cavemen. We liked it. We just grew more fur. We killed more woolly mammoths. Warhammer broke my nerd cherry. That's funny. But did it though? I mean, you were probably, I'm willing to bet you were a sci-fi fantasy fan before that. You might not have done active 
nerd things like, you know, engaged in hobby. You might not have been, you know, you might not have played D&D yet. Or maybe you weren't really into video games, but if you were, then, you know, I guess it did sort of break your nerd cherry. I'm just going to do a little... Beep. Okay. So I'm doing a little bit of highlighting here. You can see now these guys are basically caught up with these other guys like James, I got, I got Phil from the other night. And Star Wars, I was very young when I found Warhammer. Oh, cool. Then we got the Tool Time Girl. So we're going to start... Uh, Let's start wrapping up some of these other minis here. Uh, so I'm going to need some browns. I need like some chocolate browns here. I can also some highlights back down like 11 I mean if you're 10 playing Star Wars action figures people don't seem to mind right oh she's already she's already highlighted So these guys are pretty far along, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, he's off. 18 playing with Legos, people start to worry. But I think that age has relaxed quite a bit because of the mainstreaming of nerddom. Okay, so now I'm going to have to kind of pick to finish these models one by one, right? Just take a model, block in the last bits of color, like what I'm doing here in this guy. And then basically just wash him down and he'll be done. So one thing cool about Zomicide figs, the detail's okay. Detail's reasonably good, especially for a one-piece plastic mini. Um, you kind of get them washed down and, and good to go, and then you can move on to the next one. So let's just do his gun belt here, his ammo belt. Oops. Let's do a little thing here. Yeah, he's looking pretty good, actually. So I'm going to finish him and Phil at the same time because they are very similar in their colors. All right, Phil has a number of... Uh... Wow, I like all that. So they really did kind of turn him into more survivor mode type of things like Phil has like all these knives strapped to him and a bunch of weapons strapped to him so yeah it looks like he's seen some stuff this Phil pretty awesome anybody else kind of close to there To their colors to where we could finish them. Probably Bruce Willis. Yeah, we could we could probably work on Bruce Willis too. Same time. I didn't even wash Bruce Willis's skin yet. So it doesn't look like I've done that. Nerds started making money, so they're cool now. But then we have shows like Big Bang. Yep. 
Big Bang Theory, I think, was kind of the start of the end for things. Every time, uh, I am to keep skipping. Uh, back to Cheddar Monkey on YouTube. Every time I see a character in something using a bat as a weapon in something, I get flashbacks to when Batman's dad killed a guy. Two guys during the zombie apocalypse. I'm processing. I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of let that that uh, comment stand. It's cool. Yeah, you know, when Big Bang Theory first came out and I watched it, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, right? It, You know, this might actually have some perspectives that I actually share on things. And it's interesting, especially like the whole, the whole idea of, you know, this like sort of fantasy um, where the nerdy Leonard guy lands the the hot penny, right? And I it, it actually kind of bugs me that, and I'm sure this bugs a lot of gamers that, that have um, attractive significant others that we get kind of compared to that, kind of bugged me. And then, you know, to the point where that show just became so mainstream that it, I don't know, it, it, uh, it's no longer really even a nerd show. It's just, it's just a show at this point. You know, even Sheldon Cooper is like now basically a normal guy or an average guy. He's, uh, he's about to get married and He's educated and, you know, he has a girlfriend. And now you're like, eh, you know, who's this Who's this show really for at this point? Because it's no longer, I don't know. It just seems, now it just seems like a normal, like, sitcom. My girlfriend's super hot. I'm a nerd and I'm still a functioning adult. Well, that's the thing, too. I, yeah. I, I say that I say that I'm no longer a nerd, but I don't say that in any uh, with any any sort of arrogance at all. It I actually where that's more coming from is I I don't find myself having a lot in common with the modern day nerds, and even the usage of the term nerd doesn't it doesn't it's it, I don't find it represents me anymore. Um, and represents, you know, some of the things that I see as being more like traditional, uh, classically nerdy. So I, I say that the term, you know, has changed. It, it no longer, it, I, I no longer fall within its working definition. Yeah, it's season three, Octave. The storyline behind it is not only zombies were a threat, people were the biggest threat of all, kind of like Walking Dead. Oh, got it. So some of these survivors did the best they did. They came to save people, but got effed up over a couple times. Now they became a bit edgy. Gotcha. Well, that's cool. So they advanced the uh, the fluff a little bit. That's awesome. I like that. Okie doke. So now, yeah, let's go ahead and wash this bad boy. Let's see. And Sheldon's on the spectrum. I mean, you're laughing at a mentally handicapped person. That's true. You are laughing at, uh, you know, even if you, I don't know, some people argue maybe he's just, he has Asperger's. Some people argue, nah, this dude's fully on the spectrum. I don't know. I, I do agree that you are, in a sense, laughing at somebody who has, who is working with a, uh, some sort of a, a disability. Yeah, this is about as simple as it gets. Just going to run a wash here. You can see I'm not going terribly detailed on these. Because we're going to end up painting so many. And the price I gave was for pretty basic uh, paint jobs. So 
so they're pretty basic. They're going to look cool, though. I mean, they, they do look, for the, for the style of game that this is and the scale, they should look pretty good. You know, like the ones, the ones we were playing with last night. Um, they're painted to this same standard, and they look good on the, on the game board. <laughs> Mental illness, not for me. Anyhow, any tips for painting not European skin tones? Um, yes, the main tip is stay. You know, don't be afraid to paint a, a an undertone or a color that doesn't have the word skin in it. You know, um, one of the biggest tips I have for like if you're painting Asian skin is uh, use a sepia toned wash, not a like a not what a, a traditional flesh wash is. Which uh, flesh wash is is um, uh, a little a little more intense and not as warm as sepia. Sepia is sepia makes the skin tones look a little um, a little more tan and a little warmer. God damn it, Budweiser beer is showing me 10 ads. is isn't going to change my mind. <laughs> well, no? Not a Budweiser guy? <laughs> Gotta admit, I will drink a can of Budweiser from time to time. I'm just not much of a you know, I, I do like beer. I just don't drink it very often. Um, I like drinking different and trying different kinds of beers. Like, I really like, uh, my favorites are, are Asian beers, and I also really like cerveza. I like the, you know, Mexican uh, beers. Um, I like imperial stouts, so I like some of the, the heavier stuff as well. Oh man, I forgot to hit his whole, to hit his whole base. Totally forgot about that. So I like trying different kinds of beer, and en and I enjoy a lot of different kinds of beer, but um, I just don't do it that often. Um, but when I am drinking, I stick to two things really: beer and sake. And uh, we hit the sake the other night. What was that? Oh, we were hanging out. I forget. Did we play a game or not? Yeah, we did. We played Dragon Tides. We played the Bruce Lee board game. Didn't really like it. Then hung out and had some sake afterwards. <laughs> that was an interesting stream, to say the least. I'm sure it'll happen again. Um, I just need to go out and buy myself another decent bottle of sake. Because I blew through that last one. Angry Orchid's more my speed. Okay. Angry Orchard, I'm assuming. At least it was thematic. Oh, no, I'm, I really am a... Yeah, I mean, it's thematic, but I also happen to be a really big, like, sake drinker. So... I'm finish. We're going to clear Bruce Willis here. Just kind of odd. He almost looks like varies. <laughs> Drinking board game pairing. George Killian's Irish Reds are my favorite. Nice. My wife does like the. She likes stuff like that too. Um, but she she drinks um, she drinks beer more often than I drink beer. Um, and. Yeah, we have kind of different tastes in beer. But she will agree with me, like Japanese beers are really nice. Asian beers are really nice. It's hard to say what my favorite beer is. 
This is, once again, I just don't drink it that often. And I do actually like quite a bit of different kinds of beers. If we're talking beers just for taste, then I really like, um, I, I, I do tend to really like the, uh, the darker beers. Whoa, a little too wet there. Just trying to go back into that wet. Um, Asian skin tones. Asian skin tones is something I'm trying to master. Interesting. I mean, there's sunny skin tone from Vallejo model color. I just find it's a little overkill when you pair it with sepia tone. Sepia tone is you want to go, you know, you kind of follow this exact pattern, heavy skin tone and then tanned highlight. And you might throw, you might throw a final highlight after, but for the most part, no. You're good. You're good there and with the sepia tone. Okay. Starting to cook through these. Um, so she has a couple of uh, additional colors here to be aware of. I need a red. So her hair is kind of a darker brown, or at least that's how the artwork is. And we're gonna need some red. And we gotta paint all the belts and stuff too. Make myself a little, little lipstick for them. Ooh. Sorry, I'm like back in the corner here where the comments are. Just gonna hit a little bit of that red color there across the lip. Obviously, that's too much lipstick. Our town has a liquor store with an incredible selection. The guy, Kent, that owns a place will take six random beers you can choose and make them into a sampler six-pack. That's sweet. So you can just like pick six different beers and he'll package those together for you. That's nice. There's just so many different beers now. Like it's really hard to get into it and like figure out what you actually like. At least that's been my experience. Like how do you actually, uh, you know, unless you, you go out and try a bunch of stuff or you just follow other people's recommendation. I think that's kind of what you're, where you're at. I mean, my, my taste in beer has just very slowly grown over the years. Like, like I said, I don't have beer often, but I usually am pretty adventurous. Like I will try different beers all the time until I find stuff that I like. I cannot find Azure. It's gotta be up here. It's gotta be up here. I mean, it's a very common color for me. And I don't see it. But I can still use this color. This is close. Yeah, it's close enough. Paint just the bottom lip. Yeah, you can do that. I, uh, 
In this case, I just painted both lips and then painted a little bit of black gray in the opening of the mouth, and that's good enough. Speaking of which, let me do a couple of other The miniature looks like clowns. <laughs> I hope these don't look too much like clowns. Let's see how it goes. That looked okay. Let's try this one. She has, this one has a little more like closed. Yeah, she has a closed mouth, so she should look okay. Yeah, she looks okay. Sorry that, again, I'm like down in the corner there. Good enough for government work. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this over since since I tend to be over in this opposite corner, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move these over. Move this here. Now I can't read these comments, though. Oh, man. Because of the black... Oh, man. <laughs> that didn't work out so well. No, they need to be... Needs to be back over here. <laughs> Sorry. We're trying. It just happened to be where all the like black airbrush paint is. So back to normal. Okay. <laughs> Yours looks good on my tiny phone screen. YouTube chat and Dave chat. Right. Dave chat. It's all Dave chat. That's cool. You can drag them to different places on the screen. Yeah. XSplit's pretty cool program. Looks like like these girls are all kind of brunettes, right? Well, Parker asks if she kind of has a red brown hair, so I'll use a um, I'll use a kind of a ruddy, like a mahogany type color for her hair. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, I do like this uh, this program though. XSplit, it's really nice. I just need to figure out how we can do uh, Google Hangouts or something where we've got multi-user, um, multiple users on it that are looking at, say, my screen and responding to that as the as the game board. And then if I can do that and capture it on um, XSplit, then I can simulcast multiplayer board games. Oh, you just hit me with a follow. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank you kindly. I am trying to get to 50 followers here on Twitch so that uh, the videos have a little bit of persistence to them. It always kind of makes me sad that, you know, we do these videos and they're just gone. But uh, that's how it works. And, you know, luckily we do have YouTube to catch them so that you can go back and watch these if one were so inclined. Okay. Now let's do her. Oops. You want to paint stream as well? Feel free to come and heckle me if you have time. For sure, I'll, uh, I'll follow you as well. I do like to watch um paint streams on twitch uh on youtube they seem to be harder to come by they're, they're just don't seem to be as many people doing it um i consider myself to be one of the earlier people to do it on youtube because it just wasn't 
was, when Hangouts first came out, um, I think most of the time the early use of them were, you know, talk show type things and people were doing RPGs and that kind of stuff. There wasn't a lot of like live painting on YouTube though, using the, the Hangout stuff. And uh, so I was, you know, felt like a, a, an island for a long time on YouTube. Um, and oh, But over the course of the, the years, I run into a handful of other people that were doing it on YouTube. Uh, like Dizzy Angel Demon, she does it. Her streams are awesome. Um, you should totally check those out if you haven't already. Um, and then there's also uh, Dice Miniature Paint Guy. He's kind of taking a break right now on YouTube. He's got some like personal tragedy stuff he's dealing with, unfortunately. Um, but those are both really good uh, channels I would watch. I love the Twitch paint community. See, I don't even know anything about the Twitch paint community. Um, I have a follower on YouTube that's been kind of encouraging me to come over and post stuff on Twitch. Um, so, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Let's, let's see. See what uh, Twitch has to offer here. It's been okay so far. We'll see how uh, how it progresses. I do, you know, even though I'm on YouTube, like I was saying earlier, I don't really like to... Um, I don't really do much, um, like fully edited videos. I like to just stream, like hit the camera on and either paint something or I like to play a game. Streaming games live has been uh, one of my favorite things of late. You know, we've been streaming games at Guild Ball for a couple of weeks now. And uh, especially trying to push like extra life stuff. So that helps as well. Um, yeah. Okay, so she's coming along. Let's finish this tool time girl. These are some pretty cool uh, zombicide figs though, gotta say. And I would have, I could have actually painted them a little bit faster than I did. You know, took a couple days off to play games here and there, and I would actually had another commission um, that was more time critical than this one right before it. But I, I really just like the satisfaction of finishing stuff like this. It's really nice. Because then, you know, you're looking forward to the next project. You're not totally burned out because it was interesting to paint. Like that's a big thing for me. I want to I want to have fun doing this. I know I'm com doing it for commission, but I turn down commissions if I look at it and go, well, that's not going to be very fun for me to paint. You know, it's good to be able to make a little extra scratch off this, but you know, it's still a hobby to me. I'm not, you know, I have my career. I have my day job. I don't really need to uh, to try to push and make this my day job. More power to people that are trying to do that, though. Like that's kind of awesome. Um, and I hope that uh, if you are one of those people, that you uh, that you're just a positive uh, member of the community. I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Let's see, Twitch is like 80% 40K painters and 15% Kingdom Death. Well, I do neither. So, uh, well, that's not true. Occasionally, once in a blue moon, I will paint some Kingdom Death, but n I almost never do 40K. Like I said, I, I played that game for 15 years and I quit um, about 10 years ago, so.
Painting's my hobby, that's why I refuse to take commissions. Yep, I didn't, honestly, never started to take commissions until after my son was born. And it was like, well, I still want to continue the hobby, but I don't want to take money, like, I don't want to take food off the table. You know, I don't want to take money out of the bank that my kids should benefit from. So, and that, and, you know, with your time shrinking and, your space for gaming stuff shrinking. It only made sense that I would sell stuff. And if I wanted to paint more, that I needed to keep myself in the black and make sure that this pays for all the hobby stuff, which it has. And that's been really nice. Oh sweet, a Budweiser ad. <laughs> That's why we need you. Come and hang out with me in the other non 40K up for sure. I mean, I, the way my setup is, um, my camera just sits here on the painting table and I'm painting nearly every night. Uh, and when I'm not painting, I'm usually gaming. So it's not, uh, would not be a big stretch she has like a, yeah, she has like a, I don't know how much of this I really want to freehand, but. She has like a plaid shirt. So I'm just going to do a bunch of, I'm going to do a bunch of lines, like checkers. And just be happy with it. Budweiser is trying to teach me about friendship. Well, hey, they would know, right? Friendship is about cracking up in a nice cold Bud, Bud Light and enjoying it with your friends. I honestly don't mind Bud Light. I'll drink Bud Light if I, you know, if I just want a, a beer. I don't go out and buy it. But, you know, if somebody handed me a Bud Light, I would drink it. I actually like it better than Corona Light, believe it or not. Um, I know some people that are, when we're talking like cheap generic beers, there's the, uh, the Silver Bullet crowd, and then there's even like a PBR crowd, and then the, uh, the Michelob the Mickey Light Club, and then the Mickey Ultra Club. It's a very different club than a lot of these other clubs. So yeah, she's going to do generic uh, check pattern on her. And it's going to look a little weird, but that's kind of how their shirts look. They just look weird, especially at this scale. It's not going to be the, it's not going to be the best looking thing. Yeah, your bore your boring get drunk people will <laughs> your boring get drunk people will love you then. <laughs> it's a great take home. <laughs> great take home message. <laughs> Alright. So now we're gonna just shade some of this denim. A little bit of uh, blue wash. I love how you're putting creative touch and imagination on them. I like the care, the hair color a lot better on Tool Time Girl. Oh, thanks. I mean, it's I just I just went with a. Kind of a sandier brown than the art. The art was a much darker brown. And I didn't really... I just don't agree that that's the color of her hair. I think her, her hair is supposed to be lighter than, than the, the studio art. But she's coming along. She's looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. 
Heidi. <laughs> Let's see. My only complaint about Twitch is there aren't as many advertisers, so you get to see the same ad over and over. At least YouTube shows me movie trailers and games I might actually buy. Tonight it's Budweiser Friendship and the new Jigsaw movie. <laughs> Channel your inner Tim Allen. <laughs> And I just throw a little texture on these because I can't stand unbased minis. So even if it means just a little bit of texture, just to draw a little bit of interest, I think that's good. So I'm actually going to shade her with more of the, the Agrax Earth Shade stuff kind of all over because her jeans are darker. So I'm going to make them look dingy. Just kind of, and I know I'm going super quick. It's just kind of with this scale of miniature and the number that I'm doing. We just go a little bit quicker. So it's not, you know, again, this is more tabletop standard. We just want to have them look reasonably nice on the game board. Yes, this clear plastic basing needs to stop. I have never used anything like that. I see it for Rumble Slam, and I'm kind of torn. I'm like, eh, you know, I love the Rumble Slam miniatures. I just don't know if uh, I, I agree with you. I don't know if I'm down with that uh, clear plastic basing. It 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 also it does kind of put more onus on you to really paint a nice clean miniature which isn't the end of the world I get the idea that your mini can now match the tabletop but it's floating <laughs> oh yeah because you you know that's the argument oh you can put it on any tabletop and it'll match yeah it's also floating So now, right now, I'm just doing a little bit of armor wash to make the jacket look more black. So she doesn't look too bad. And that's basically all we really do here on Scarface is, oops, first, we just kind of hit the parts that are supposed to be white. Because now that we've done everything else, here. Hey, tabletop isn't a bad standard; it's just a different approach. That's what really what what I do is I really kind of specialize in tabletop. Like I, I rarely if ever put together a display level miniature um because most of my clients are gamers and they want to be able to uh, get these on the game board relatively quickly but they want them to look decent right they want them to look um you know somewhat nice when they put them out on the board and i think i can achieve that standard with really kind of basic techniques get your get the mini to that point and your clients are going to be fairly happy. You know, if a client were to demand a super, super high uh, quality, then, you know, I'm going to tell them, okay, well, either you pay me a lot more because I usually charge for 
based on a more tabletop level standard. So either you pay me more or I just turn down the job because it's like, um, it's not worth my time because the kind of time it's going to take to do your one display piece, I could get through several jobs with my other clients who aren't going to be as particular. We're going to be fairly happy with what's going down on the board, you know? Right, but when you paint for the game, you're painting two foot viewing, not two inches, exactly. Right, not painting to win any contests or anything like that. We're just trying to get through these. Oh, speaking of which, Heidi needs, uh, her drill needs shading. It's also kind of crooked, but I can't do a whole lot about that other than try to bend it manually and hope it stays. Heidi needs a little blue shade too. Chat got quiet. Are we done? Do we need, uh, do we need more topics to discuss? Plus your fine layers and shades just get lost on the game table. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you keep enough of them on through your airbrushing and highlighting and shading, they still kind of pop a little bit. So Dave, what I was going to ask you is if you have any insight as to how I might stream what is the equivalent of a Google Hangout through XSplit so that I could stream it to Twitch and YouTube at the same time, let me know. Because that's kind of the dream for me is I want to do, I want to do board gaming, like kind of how I do on my YouTube channel, which is over a Google Plus Hangout, uh, which allows me multiple players of, over the internet. And it allows me to basically run a centralized game board that people are making decisions on remotely and live. I need to be able to do that in such a manner that XSplit will capture it and then XSplit can simulcast it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, we are really cooking now. Cooking with fire. Just going to add a little bit of hints of black, specifically to the weapons. What color is this lady's hair? It is also brown. A lot of brown hair in this crew. Queen to tabletop, use XSplit and capture the screen area of the Hangout. You know, for whatever reason, I tried that once. And what happens is when it shows up on XSplit, the, the, um, the XSplit UI, the, it shows a black screen. It doesn't show the Hangout. And I'm not really sure why. Yeah, it's all black. What does that mean exactly? I'm just listening to you and the others. So yeah, what do I what do I do if it's all black? Because that's exactly what's going on. Like it, you know. Obviously, I don't have. What I do is I make sure that the the webcam I'm using is not an available source on XSplit. So I just remove it completely from XSplit so that there's no conflict as to 
what is controlling the camera. Uh, in this case, it would be uh, Google Hangouts that are controlling the camera. Yes, and I'm using Chrome. Is that the problem? In Chrome, settings, advance, use hardware acceleration when available. Disable that. Sweet. Hold the phone. Let me, f let's, let's do that right now. Not that I'm going to, well, I'll test it separately, but before I forget to do it, let me go do that right now. Yeah, let's go do that right now. <laughs> right now. Also, by I know. Sorry, my I keep doing this. <laughs> if this works, I think you just saved me. We can go back to streaming some awesome games. Uh, and we're gonna go to advanced. System, use hardware acceleration when available. All right, turn that off. Yeah, I, I actually use the, there's the, the bottom of the clip, which is usually what I do, but man, I just, it's this more of like a muscle memory thing. Like I have my area that I know I'm supposed to be in, but I just, I don't know, I just uh, so bad at like trying to move it. It's like, <laughs> like I get to talking and it's like, what? Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So I got to continue to work on that. I do appreciate when you guys are telling, when you tell me though, that like, hey, you're off screen, dude. Keep the mini on there. Um, the other challenge I have is because I tend to do a lot of batch painting and stuff. I have all my minis on different holders and the holders are different heights. So a lot of times I get, they get lost in the mix that way as well. Not trying to make excuses. I'm just telling you kind of what, what we do right now. I'm doing my armies on parade board for 40 K. Cool. Yeah, I'm, we were just talking that this is, my channel is a, we paint everything except 40K. And, uh, and we don't, that's not true. I do paint privateer press, but it's very rare. But everything else, pretty fair game. I don't paint, I just don't paint a lot of GW. It's just not, the scale of the games is, I like to paint um, skirmish games for skirmish games and that kind of stuff. So I don't like to paint big armies. Um, I've done like, uh, I played 40k for, like I was saying, 15 years. So I'm, I don't really, now that I'm do pretty much all skirmish games, I really like just that amount of miniatures. And even for things like, um, like Zombicide, this is a Zombicide commission. I only take a dozen minis at a time because I don't want to, because it's just, it's, it's like disheartening to look at all the minis at once and go, man, I got to paint all that. And you like, you get depressed about it. Like you don't want to even face the, face the reality, you know? She does have a lot of like, uh, This one does have a lot of denim on her. <laughs> She's a little bit darker than the studio art. That's okay. Stop with the, the excuses. <laughs> Strap you to the bench. That's right. No, I'm just not, uh, 
I'm just not very disciplined. It comes down to it, I just have to. She needs a, her skin is way too dark. I'm gonna have to bring a couple of highlights back in. My green tide 40k army almost broke me. Yeah, I mean, I had, when I was playing 40k, um, I had f about 15,000 points of Eldar um, that were three different craft worlds. Uh, so same Han, I end in Bealtan. Um, I had uh, about 5,000 points of orcs, another 2,000 chaos, another 2,000, um, I'm sorry, another 2,000 in Alpha Legion, and then I had a, uh, and I had a chaos cult army as well. Um, then I had a, a mentor legion space marine chapter that was about 2,000 points as well. Um, and then I had some older stuff. Gene Steeler Cult Army. I had a squat army. Actually, I still have my squats. I have about 1,500 points worth of squats. Um, and it's all painted. Like every last piece is painted. And I don't. And I've never. That's kind of like where my channel name comes from. Like I never feel unpainted stuff. So when I stopped painting 40K. And I started painting like Malifaux, even Blood Bowl, like the skirmish stuff, the smaller level stuff. Um, it like life got so much better and I got to enjoy painting so much more. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. So that's kind of why like I won't go back to GW. It's like, eh. it's I, I had all my painted stuff before and I sold all of it. So, you know. All good. So anyways, I'm just gonna hit this, ooh, wrong color. <gasps> wrong color shade. You can fix that. How dare I grab the wrong color. So yeah, it's, um, you know, this is kind of what I do these days. I do, uh, you'll see a lot of Batman I'll paint a lot of Batman Guild Ball. I paint a lot of Guild Ball. Um, and then you'll see some board game minis. Um, what I'm going to paint after these guys is I'm going to paint myself a, not really a custom miniature, but I'm going to paint myself a special miniature f for, um, for Batman. And uh, I'll stream that as well. I do. I do really like GW minis. Um, you know, they're super detailed and all that kind of stuff. It's just the aesthetic itself. After having done that for so long, no longer. It just no longer really appeals to me. So, like, I can appreciate them for being really, really high quality miniatures and super detailed and all that stuff. But you know. The aesthetics of a space marine, the aesthetics of, you know, elves and dwarves and, you know, all their, I don't even, they don't call them that anymore. They call them Sylvaneth and they call them all kinds of other stuff. Those, those iconic um, looks for me, just, I'm not, and I, they, they no longer draw my interest. That's all. making a Mad Max style game using 40k figs so I can paint what I like and I'm excited about Necromunda. Nice. Yeah, the Wasteland games could use a few more games. You have, um, this is not a test. Uh, and you, you even have like a, so you have Warland, so that's a much smaller company. This is not a test in Warland. So here's the issue. See how this is a much bigger bottle this is on? This is, I've got to go like that. <laughs> but you know. You get it, live and learn. And I'm also out of focus, just because that's such a different size. Whereas this guy, he's on a little cork, I put him on it and he's all the way down here. Whoop. So, anyway, 
you gotta piss on everything in love and why am I still here? Yeah, sorry, I, I again I'm not trying to I'm really not trying to do that. I'm just explaining like kind of where I'm at in and so and it's actually what I'm trying to say is that this channel um will kind of focus on things around that not 40k gw but everything else essentially so if you want to watch everything else this is a, a good channel to kind of supplement your other subs when you're like okay you know we'll watch uh we'll watch some um night models getting painted or that kind of thing okay so these guys are going to dry and I guess while we're here, I can show you what my next project is going to be. So we'll put these away. Nelson, if you're still awake. Oh, hey, what's up, Dizzy? Welcome to the feed. Yeah, it is late, huh? Um, if you guys want to, uh, you're just in time to, to see what I'm going to paint next. So I'm finished, pretty much finished with the, with that zombicide commission. We're going to move on to, I'm going to do something for me. And it, this is going to be so much for me that it's not even, well, I don't know. I might be able to get, you might be able to talk me into dropping this into my extra life raffle. But, uh, so let me, let's just, let me just show you what this is. So this is a, a Reaper wear shark. Okay. And it's a really cool miniature. Um, I'm going to, looks like it's three pieces so i'm going to take this out um i i am planning on my, my plan for this is actually i want to use this in my batman games um and i want to use him as king shark uh king shark currently doesn't have any rules um it, for batman but i'm going to use him i'm going to use the parademon rules for the were shark uh, so he's just, you know, so I can't actually field him. I do need to put him on a 40 mil round base to make him playable. That's not a terrible issue, not a terribly difficult issue. I do have some like round bases on me. Here's a, this is a stamped wood plank base. That might kind of work. I just might stamp a fresh one. But yeah, that's going to be the next project for me. Is I'm going to work on that. Um, well, do I not have an? Oh no, that's just. It's also 40 mil. I was really into wood plank basing. I guess. I mean, you won't look bad on it. Let's see. Let me try to find a blank 40 mil in this pile of mess. Right. I think every base I have has been pre-stamped. Oh, I should also point out to Lizzie that, uh, sorry, Dizzy, that uh, I think Queens of Tabletop here may have solved my technical issue. <laughs> I didn't get the hammerhead. They didn't have them in this in my LGS. You can hear me like shuffling through all this stuff, but here, let's just open them. Let's just do it. I could put them. I could try to like I could buy like a weird a sewer base from Weird and do that. Mm. See what the the pinning is going to look like <laughs> street sharks versus batman yeah so i'll have to pin there it's weird there's kind of this he does look, does look like he's kind of wearing a bodysuit like king shark is wearing right because you can see you can see like a cut off there so me you know i could paint this more like a tank top on him but I'd pin that in there. And then obviously, hold on. Hold on. Let's see how this looks. 
light file. For sure, I'm going to need to pin them. I, I pin everything. <laughs> I'm kind of a pinning freak, actually. Okay. Then I'm going to have to, I'm going to carefully remove this from him, his, this base that he's built on. And I'll just pin him through the feet there. And this looks like this arm kind of inserts that way. So he's kind of throwing, he's throwing both arms back and then the tail kind of goes up like that. It's weird. The tail, that's a weird fit. It kind of swings, it swings really low. Yeah. So it looks like he's going to need a little bit of prep. He's got a, ooh, a pretty nasty uh, mold line right there. So, yeah. But anyways, this is, this is what I'm, I'll be working on next. I could be starting as soon as tomorrow on this. Um, but it's not, it's not a very extensive paint job. So it'll probably be done in one session here. <laughs> cool. I might just commission you to just pin. Oh, I hate. Yeah. And you know, when you work on like night models, um, or, or guild ball where they're standing on their tippy toes and that kind of stuff, it gets pretty rough, Speci you know, specifically like some of the, uh, female models, the real dainty ones that are standing on little tippy toes. I have a special, um, I have some tips for pinning that small. Like I have, um, I have, I use these kinds of bits for it. Um, they're really nice. They come on shark man with Naruto running pose. <laughs> yeah. I use these types of bits for pinning really, really small joints. And then I use, um, I use a really thin gauge, uh, musical wire to pin. But yeah, I pin everything, um, and it's it's pretty tedious. I'm actually really, uh, what we were talking about earlier, really excited about uh, night models going to resin because, you know, you're just basically pinning them to the base. That's all you really have to do. And, and pinning resin is very easy. If anything, the fear is that you go through it too quickly and, you know, the, the bit comes out the other side. But uh, yeah, so this guy's next. We'll work on him. I'm not sure. I mean, wood plank does kind of make sense for him, but I'm not entirely sure that that's what I want to do. Um, but he's for fun, you know. I I don't need to. I don't need the miniature, but I would love to put him down as part of my secret six instead of Mike the Parademon. Um, although I do really like Mike the Parademon. Um, oh yeah, it looks like that. What's he holding? It's like an octopus. I think he's eating an octopus in that hand. But yeah, you just clip that. And I'll clean all this up. Whoa. Looks like uh, starting to, my feet starting to chop up here. Okay, well, before I actually get too far like into this. <laughs> Let's see. Pewter is better, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I really do like metal gaming pieces. They're just the right weight. I like that, you know, the only, my main complaint with metal is um, having to pin it and then metal, uh, um, metal pole arms are just drive me nuts. You know, trying to keep those suckers straight. Just a nightmare. But anyway, it is now 12:30 uh, our time, so uh, so I think we are going to call it here. Let me show you guys just real quick, kind of what we're looking at for the zombicide stuff as they're drawing down. So we got Phil. This is the other seven from the well, from the 12 that we did. I forget this guy's name, James. I think I don't even know what the character reference is here, but that's James. 
get a little reflection from King Shark. This is the Tool Time Girl. It's super fun. And you got basically Scarface. Real simple mini. Pet Eel. <laughs> Again, I don't know what these references are, but girl with the axe. You got another one. She's just kind of holding a submachine gun off to the side. Pretty fun. And then finally, you got I think this is the the new Bruce Willis model. He actually, you know, what? he actually does need a little. I need to go back and re-highlight his, his face because it's a little funky looking. So, anyways, with that. We're going to call it a night. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll probably stream something tomorrow night.